Have you ever ridden one hour with an average speed of almost 22 miles per hour? Well, imagine riding for 24 hours straight at that same average speed to not only shatter a previous world record, but to then continue riding to set an entirely new record for the fastest time to complete 1,000 kilometers. On today's episode, we'll be covering ultra racing from the perspective of one of the world's legends. We'll be covering everything from 24-hour record attempts to the race across America, to training, coaching, nutrition, strategy, and of course, all the usual awesome ultra talk. I'm your host, Justin Tu. Let's roll. Hey, Ultra Family, Justin Tu here, your host of the Ultra Cycling Show. Thanks for tuning in for today's very special episode with our guest, the man, the myth, the legend, Marco Ballo. We'll be discussing his recent world record setting accomplishment in the 24 hour outdoor road category, as well as the 1000 kilometer world record. Marco currently resides in Slovenia, but he races all around the world and especially here in the US. He began his cycling career back in 1985, competing in UCI road races. And in 2000 is when he began his ultra cycling career. His very first race across America was in 2003. And since then, he has accomplished a great deal, including competing in 10 race across Americas. As a solo racer, he's completed the event in nine days, two hours. That was in 2011. He also won first place in the 50 plus division. He's also competed once in a two man relay and they won first place back in 2008. Of those 10 Rams, he's also participated on two occasions, once as a crew chief and once as an official. In addition to the race across America, he's also competed in the race across the West, once as a solo racer and once as a two person team and also once this year in the virtual race across the West. In addition to his latest record this year for the outdoor road record, he's also completed the outdoor track record, completing 890 kilometers in 2008. And in 2010, he was the first person ever to ride over 900 kilometers in 24 hours on the indoor track. And of course, this year he set two new world records on the outdoor road, including breaking the previous record of 856.3 kilometers in 24 hours. And at the same time, he continued to ride on for 28 hours, 50 minutes to complete 1,000 kilometers, which is the fastest that anybody has ever ridden that distance. So Marco, thank you for joining us for a chat today. It's a real privilege to have you on the show. Uh, Thanks for inviting me. You can also tell the story where where we first met, do you remember? Oh, that's right. Our our century, what was the name? Um, yeah, yeah. Probably. actually, I, you know, I think that was the second time we met. Yeah. I don't know if you remember the first time we met at Tina Waitsman's Yeah, right, house. right. There was some party. Yeah, there was a party. Right, yeah, okay, right, exactly. Okay, <laughs> I remember. But we did also end up riding with another guest that I had on the show previously, Jason Perez. We rode the Solvang yeah. Double Century. Solvang, right. Yeah, yeah. that and was I, fast. I believe that was the fall edition of it. No, it's no spring. It was the spring. No, okay. March or April, yeah. Yeah, I remember because you and Jason tore us all apart. <laughs> Full gas <laughs> I had the whole trouble time. Trouble holding his wheel. He was smoking. Yeah, that was hard for me. <laughs> well, Marco, cool. I'd love to start off with a quick sprint round of questions. Just a few questions that you can answer in a, a couple sentences to allow everybody to get to know you in a nutshell. So, my first sure. question I have for you is How many bicycles do you own? <laughs> <laughs> do you think I have a quick answer? <laughs> Can it be approximate? Sure, yeah. Probably An estimate. Without my my the one for the for the shop and for work, <laughs> I don't know. Probably six or seven. I, uh, I have to get back awesome. to you about that. Sure. I don't want you my wife to hear. <laughs> There's a lot of bikes. Few, yeah. Few stowed yeah. away in secret. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, of those bicycles, what's your favorite bicycle? Ooh, at the moment. Uh, Spiegel San Marino. Mm. It's Aero Road. Nice one. Nice. What bicycle do you ride the most? The same answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Makes yeah. sense. Okay. What bicycle computer do you use? A Garmin? A Wahoo? Yeah, I use Garmin uh, 1030. Okay. 
Marco, what's your favorite ride snack? Um, banana. Oh, interesting. Okay. And how about your favorite ride hydration? I mean, during the ride, there would have to be some electrolytes, um, heat, hammer heat. Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. very popular. Otherwise, you know, for when I'm, I don't know, when you bonk, it's different, uh, it's different than I need a Coke and a chocolate. Mm. <laughs> nice. That helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Some secret tips there for you folks. <laughs> All right, Marco, how about after a long, hard ride? What's your favorite post ride meal? All, I mean, I, because it, you, usually it's not prepared, I usually uh, drink something, you know, some protein shake and protein mm-hmm. and carbs shake. That's the first thing, but otherwise I, uh, I'm an old school kind of guy, so big, big bowl of pasta works for mm. me the best. Right. Maybe some meat, but pasta is uh, the important. Sounds delicious. How, how, how many uh, bowls or plates can you eat of, of that after, say, a 24-hour world I don't know. Set? I mean, the, <laughs> you're, you think you're going to eat. Uh, we, we did uh, finish late this time at 10 p.m. Still find a, pla- a nice place. Um, you know the the, rest, the restaurant, so they cooked and mm. they ordered a lot. <laughs> of course, they couldn't eat everything, you know, because you know your your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Uh, so yeah, I probably could eat. Uh, I did. I, I do remember eating two large pizzas once after a big ride. Holy, two large pizzas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Marco, what is what is your max speed down a hill? Do you know? Yeah, actually, but. The, that's from my pre pre ultra times when I was still racing. Mm. It was uh, actually my you know you won't believe it maybe but my max speed is on flat. Mm. You know we used to train uh, behind the van, mm. and uh, sometimes we were kind of uh, our coach was testing us who can you know how far how how fast can you go. So mm. I I was was um, stayed behind at. Uh, 105 kilometers an hour. Wow! And there were there were two guys who managed to to get to almost 120. Wow. <laughs> Otherwise, downhill was close to, to close to 195 probably. Hmm. Also in the race at that time. She so on but a still, flight. Still on the, you know, even in Ram, I remember probably the you you know <laughs> hmm. descent. Maybe it's the fa- the descent uh, towards Mexican head. Hmm. You know that one. If you if you if you know it, I mean, I, I know I know pretty much know the road, uh, and you can just do it without braking. And it was probably eighty something, eighty five kilometers an hour. Nice. Fast. So you're definitely yeah. comfortable at high speeds. I mean, 105 kilometers. That's about what 65 miles per hour. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So that's yeah. Uh, like that's fast enough to yeah. go on the freeways over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And yeah, you did it on a flat, so I guess you're uh, pretty yeah. versatile. <laughs> we were, um, yeah, young and stupid. Now we're <laughs> old and stupid. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Okay, Marco, a couple more sprint round questions, and then I'd love to dive into your world record uh, setting. Um, what is your favorite time of day that you prefer riding, training, or racing? Yeah, morning, I would say. With age, I kind of don't like waking up early in the morning anymore. I used to, when for my first rams, I used to, Almost every day I woke up three, four, and I don't did my training before work. And uh, nowadays it just happens sporadically. But I still love it the most because you know it's it's peaceful, no cars. Uh, you see the sunrise. It's yeah, that's my favorite favorite part. Even yeah. during the racing, I mean, forget about the last days of RAM because you don't know exactly <laughs> what's happening. Right. But otherwise, yeah, the the sunrise is the most the most beautiful part of the day. Most definitely, I think a lot of us agree with that. Okay, last question, very important one. What is your favorite event? I mean, Ram. I mean, I'm thinking because there's so many. There's so many. Yeah, yeah Ram. I think I, that's why I'm come, keep coming back. You know, that's why. Yeah, I mean, like you said, in third uh, since, since 2003, so 17 years. Mm. Uh, I did. I was there 12 times. So, so. Wow. Yeah, uh, 14 actually with, with uh, Ross. So it tells you everything, you know. I would right. be probably every year if uh, money wouldn't be an issue. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And yeah. with all, all of that expense, the travel, the logistics, having done it so many times really shows how much it means to you and how much fun it is for you. 
Yeah, it does. I mean, you, you kind of every, everybody, you know, it's everybody who does it. Uh, I mean, most of people love it. Mm-hmm. Some people don't like it and they don't come back. But if you like it, you just, it's hard to stay away. You know, for me, the, the hard years are when I, when I cannot afford it and I stayed at home. It's so mm-hmm. hard, you know, watching the dots, you know, because you, you cannot uh, stay away. So you mm-hmm. watch it on the internet, you know, even in those 20 years ago, I mean, 17. Uh, it was uh, different, you know. There wasn't the Facebook and Twitter and uh, those all those social stuff, but there was still right. internet, and we could we could follow the the movements. And uh, it was it's just uh, hard to stay at home. Mm. I hope I'll be back some. I mean, last year I've I've said plenty of times that that was my last time. <laughs> same last year, but I think I'll be back. Uh, if I can afford it, I'll be back for sure. Right. Well, we definitely hope to see you back here in the States again. You always make for a good show of competition out there on the road. And I know a lot of us love watching that. So with that, Marco, I do want to dive into our grand tour of questions and really the the topic at hand here, your recent 24-hour world record um, setting that you did. So I'd love to just start with that. And perhaps you could just give us a brief overview of the the whole record that you set. Mm. Kind of just discuss, you know, when did you start? How did it all play out? Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, first of all, I was thinking about it uh, for some time, I mean, for years. I mean, like I told uh, before, I did the outdoor track, indoor track, but I was thinking about the road already, I would say, four, no, six, seven years ago. Uh, and when I checked it out, um, the guy who was holding it was Euro. Ro- so it was more than that. It was more than five years ago, with because five years ago Strasse then uh, said mm. it. But uh, Ro- Robic, you know, my my countryman, my friend, uh, uh, had it. So I said, I just don't want to dethrone him because uh, you know we lost him for uh, by an accident, and he died ten years ago now. Right. So I just didn't uh, didn't have I don't know, just didn't have the will to do it. And then 2015, uh, Christoph Strasser did it. Uh, and then it was just uh, somehow it just never materialized. You know, always RAM is always the first the first priority. And then it just, you know, you need pretty, I mean, you have to focus your year more or less mm. uh, to, do, to do that kind of thing. So I never, never materialized. This year, you know, with, with COVID and the pandemic, uh, just a crazy season. There's no racing. Uh, so as soon as we we got the idea that probably nothing is going to happen uh, i mean almost almost nothing until the end of the year uh i started thinking about uh going for that uh, you know because you can do it even even if everything would be on lockdown like it was i could still do it you know with a couple of crew right uh, taking now, care of uh, social distancing and uh, you can do it right now, when when was that? So it sounds like it wasn't something you thought about for a year or two or anything like that. Sometime this year, when did the? Yeah, hey, I mean, the, the day, yeah, probably three months ago, three or four months ago. Yeah. So, so the, the, I mean, the lockdown here started the early March, and probably in April, I guess, or even May. So it's not that far, yeah, but. You know, uh, I mean, uh, I was, I mean, I was training anyway for for different races, so it might be a little bit different, you know, uh, because you need a little bit more speed for twenty four hours. But mm. I'm always more or less in in shape to to be able to do it. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe maybe you're right. If I if I thought of it uh, a year ago, I would be more specific preparation and. You can that's that's a debate you no know, thing. You can we can debate about it, uh, but right. uh, I think I was. Uh, I mean, I had, I think I have I had enough time. I, I, I yeah, I that sounds good. It's pretty incredible that you said you are generally in pretty good shape each year through the year, which puts you in a good opportunity to take advantage of you know a time when you can focus on something different. Now. If you did give yourself more time, um, as you said, you think you could probably have done even better. As a coach, um, for those who don't know this, you also do have a coaching business. And so you do train uh, other athletes as well, many of whom compete in the Race Across America. Yes. How would you advise somebody, any one of, say, your, uh, your previous Ram racers that you've coached, how would you advise them and coach them to be able to 
prepare for a 24 hour uh, record setting attempt just as you did, I'd imagine you wouldn't give them a three month training program. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably the la- the last two months are more specific, but that, uh, uh, it's not that that uh, different, you know, than than the other ultra ultra racing, you know, because the racing uh, is uh, ex- except Ram or Trans Siberia or those uh, multi day races, you know, they are all a day to two days, you know, five hundred miles to thousand miles, so it's all there, uh, and uh, and I. I, anyway, in any case, I like my my uh, clients to work on speed because uh, you know the the stronger you are, the faster you can you can ride, the the more chances you have you know to reach your goals, to be fed, to to mm-hmm. reach I don't know to win or or finish even you know even for those guys who just uh, train to finish ram you know if they if they can work on raising their FTP you know functional threshold you know so be being more powerful. That means that you can uh, uh, go faster or at the lower level, you know, aerobic mm. pace or whatever you call it. You know, it, it's just uh, so. Anyways, it's not that much different. But uh, with a twenty-four hour uh, record or whatever race, uh, I like my my people or myself. You know, I, we do we do a lot of time, a lot, couple of days a week time trialing. Being on, if you have a time trial bike, which is of course an asset, especially if you go for a record, you have to have mm-hmm. it nowadays. Uh, you have to get used to it. So it's it's not that you can uh, hop on it a month or two weeks before the race and get get used to it. You just have to do it. Uh, I don't know, half a year ahead, uh, at least two times a week. Even if you know, if you, even if you do the recovery rides on Tita bike, it just it still uh, helps. You know, it still gets your body accustomed to it. So so that's it. And uh, okay. we do a lot of. Uh, I mean some long long time trials you know up, up to five six hours even you know mm. and that, that's that's more or less it you know it's it's pretty specific so um so for this record set then um when did you start training specifically to do it was it three months ago or you know what was the lead up in your training to actually build yeah. the speed and fitness that you wanted yeah you know like, like i said i'm yeah. i'm Kind of, I don't know. I cannot use myself as an example because I like to train and I like to train fast, and so I'm. I, I, it's kind of funny. I, I always like to say, even even in a year when I don't plan on doing RAM, if somebody comes uh, to me with a check for five, I don't know, fifty. Well, how, how do you, how much is it? Forty, fifty thousand dollars a month before RAM. I could, uh, I could mm. do it. Oh, that's uh, pretty I'm incredible. I'm sure of it. Let's let's try to prove it. <laughs> someday. All right. Yeah, it's we'll gonna see. be hard. Yeah, but but otherwise, I'm I'm always uh, so. I, I mean, that does mean that all through the year I'm the same shape. So I do take a break after Borrego usually. Uh, so in November, and then I try uh, I start to build up the base again. And uh, but after after I start racing, which usually is in, in February in uh, Florida. Right. Uh, then, then it's uh, just business as usual. You know, a lot of speed work, a lot of intervals uh, all the time. So, so for this year, I was preparing uh, for Red Bull Trans Siberian, which was cancelled. I would say in April. So mm. I would say that that time I, I decided uh, to to go for this uh, twenty four hours, and I didn't change much uh, other than the, like I told you, I I did uh, add more more. TT bike riding, which usually mm-hmm. I do once a week. Then now for the last two months, I did at least two rides a week, mm. uh, and those long, long TT uh, time trials uh, became a little longer and a little uh, faster. And that's more, more or less it. You know, it just then. Mm. Otherwise, it's just a mental thing. Uh, you know, you have to uh, the same for twenty four hours as for mm-hmm. You have to, I mean, stay on the bike and keep pushing. You know, it's. Sure. It's a hard event, anyways. It's 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 uh, when you finish ram, it's it's kind of kind of feels you know, twenty four. It's nothing, you know. But <laughs> but when you go fast, it's it's hard. It takes its toll. Right. So let's get back to the actual twenty four hour record that you just set. Where yeah. did you where did you even ride your bike to set this attempt? Tell me a little bit about the logistics. Yeah, yeah. That was another another pretty easy. Yeah, everything was uh, now you. Uh, when you say it, uh, we we are organizing the 24-hour race in Slovenia. Now it's this year it should be fifth version. 
and mm. it was cancelled uh, also uh, because of COVID. Mm. And uh, the same, uh, approximately the same time as uh, the Trans Siberian was cancelled. So I, I just used the same date that was uh, that the race was going to be on. You know, the twenty fourth, twenty fifth of July. Mm-hmm. I talked to the people because it's not uh, in my hometown, but uh, other side of Slovenia, where I have really good uh, relations relations with the mayor and every. I mean, the the support is just overwhelming, uh, mm. even for a race and now for the record. I mean, I had I had spectators all night long. They they were outside and cheering for me. It was it was cool. So I just uh, I just decided to do it on the same in the same place, but not the same uh, track because the the race is a little bit short. I mean, our loop is 11 kilometers, and I want it longer. So I prolonged it uh, also with a little less uh, turns, you know, so we lose less speed. So I used 20 kilometers loop. Uh, then I had to had it surveyed, you know, to measure to measure it officially, and mm. uh, then you know you you have to apply with uh, Buka, so World Ultra Cycling uh, Association, mm-hmm. and they also uh, measure themselves. So I mean, they check the measurement, and they and then you have to get uh, the officials. So it's it's kind of logistics are I mean. There's some work, for, you know. I mean, but now, now we've done it. Not only those records that you mentioned, but also did the, the 12 hours once and the 100 miles, and across Slovenia. So I did it uh, multiple times. So we know what, I especially. I mean, so Emma, you, you, my you wife know, knows. you know the whole procedure and the process and and how to yeah. go about that. So how long did it end up taking from from start to finish just to set it up so that way it could be an official world record attempt? I mean, yeah, you have to, uh, st- I mean, officially have to apply at least 21 days. That's uh, the bottom line. I mean, that's the, the last minute. If mm. you wait, if you wait for 20 days, then you have, I mean, you, you cannot uh, apply. So you have to apply 20 days prior. So that, that's when you have to just, just let them know what are you doing, when are you doing, just the basics. And then from in those, those 21 days or more, if you give yourself more, more time, you have a, uh, time to uh, uh, either survey it or if you do it, uh, it's the easiest if, if you can do it on an already surveyed course, it's pretty, probably also in USA, it's pretty I mean, easy. You can find uh, where the previous holder did it and you can use the same venue, which then you can, you, you don't have to do it again, but just have to tell them which, which uh, road, I mean, which track or whatever um, are you using. Uh, and then, yeah, you have to get the officials, which uh, and they have to be approved by VUCA. Uh, so they have to read the rules, and then they have a test. Mm. Uh, so that's one thing. Then the crew, the crew is usually for for the guys who are are in this sport. You know, it's just you ask people who are already there. For me, it's mm. my wife Irma, and then she then she she takes care of everything everything else. I I can uh, kind of just train and. Uh, yeah. Let her do the business. That's awesome. Yeah, I always I always see Irma supporting you and in all of your race across Americas and she Yeah, she, I just you just cannot imagine. I mean uh yeah. without without the home support you cannot imagine uh, right. to be doing this sport. It's just uh, too overwhelming. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm happy I have her. Very cool. Marco, I'd love to go over your twenty four hour uh, world record by sharing my screen here and kind of just going through a bit of your, your Facebook page. I know you do have a Marco Bello Ultra Cyclist uh, fan page that people can find you on and follow all of your journeys, not just uh, the 24-hour the record, but if they wanted to look back. And so just starting here, J- July 21st, I see that there was a post you, you were talking about, you know, less than three days ago before you were starting your world record attempt. And then yeah. you gave a, an explanation of, uh, some things that have already been done previously. And mm. so you're talking about this is your first 24-hour world record attempt on an outdoor track, mm-hmm. and that was in 2008. We discussed yep. that. And also in 2010, you rode 900 kilometers for the first time that anybody has ever done that. So mm-hmm. kind of just give me a little bit of the backdrop there leading into this in terms of what you've already accomplished and, and really what this meant for you. Yeah, it's funny. If you look at my uh, 
Facebook page or my website. I also have a website, marcobarlo.com. Uh, there wasn't, there was no mention of the record before, prior to those, the last week. I don't know why. I just kept, I don't know. I just like to keep it a secret a little bit. I, I'm not sure. Uh, just no, no real reason. But um, so, uh, otherwise, uh, yeah. Um, the the thinking was, uh, of course, I wanted to go for the overall record. You know, the Strasser's uh, 896, and uh, I was thinking more of how. Um, how big a difference will there be in 10 years, you know, because 2010, as you said, I was the first person mm. uh, ever to do 900 plus in uh, 24 hours solo, I mean, non-drafting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just wanted to do if I'm capable of doing it again. I mean, different circumstances, of course, because that was indoor track. So it's uh, on one side, it's perfect. And on the other, it's 250 meters track. So 20 second lap. Can calculate this. It was three thousand six hundred laps, so it's kind of mental a little bit. You can ask wow. Christoph Strasser about it. <laughs> uh, he, he did it. Uh, I don't know two years ago. So I was just kind of wondering, you know, uh, how how much will my my age affect it uh, if I'm still able? I was thinking really. I, I had a chance. I had a shot even for the overall. Even even during the re before the record, during the record for the first uh, six seven hours, I was really smoking i was really good except i had a unplanned number two stop which is never good in 24 hours but when you have mm. to do it you have to do it i lost some 10 minutes then then uh and uh and i still after that i still kept a really good pace for 12 hours so i was on the way still on the on, on the way to maybe do 900 but uh, I mean, I, I could feel, I mean, you know, you know that your, your speed is going down in the second, second mm -hmm. part. It always does, but you don't know until you try where, where is it? Uh, <laughs> there's my doggy coming, coming, visiting me. Hello. <laughs> uh, so you never, you never know where, where is it, you know, going to stay, you know, because. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm just uh, being warned that this is a big thunderstorm coming, so maybe there will be have problem with the oh, okay. lightning. Okay, okay, not problem. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that was that was my more personal. You know, I was kind of uh, I knew that I I had it. I knew that I had it in me for for uh, fifty plus because mm. you know I usually I mean in the last ten years I I rarely go below five hundred miles or so eight hundred kilometers. And uh, this time, this so it was pretty certain. But I was I was gunning for 900 kilometers again, and it just didn't happen. So yeah, that was a little bit of disappointment even during the race. But uh, you know, I was still gunning for thousand kilometers, so you ha you cannot stop. You just keep pushing, and uh, right. I was I was happy then. I mean, it's it's still a big number, even for 24 hours. You know, it's not many many people can do 500 miles in 24 hours. So I'm still there. That was another thing last year in Borrego in the world in the world championships. It was first time in many years that that I really felt bad and I did only I mean only seven ninety something. <laughs> it was a yeah. big disappointment. So I'm now I'm back at the eight hundred. And I'm, I'm still hopeful that I can come come back to Borrego this year. I don't know. It doesn't look too good for the moment, but I'm mm. I'm hopeful, you know, October. Yeah. Maybe I'll well, get back. Again, a big congratulations on this latest records, both for the 24 hour 50 plus and also for the 1000 kilometer. Tell me a little bit about pacing for a 24 hour record attempt. Are you going flat out from the beginning and just, you know, squeezing every ounce of energy from you through it? Yeah, no, no, it's not a good idea. But also, I mean, uh, this. I don't think uh, you can do it uh, on flat on on the same uh, power. It's just, I mean, people think that that you can uh, just do your every, I mean, do your pace, do your power, and then hold it for twenty four hours. Mm. I don't think you can. Uh, I mean, I've never seen a person who can. There are some people who can do it closer, you know, uh, but it's not full out for sure. I I I could go faster if I had to or wanted to. Mm. Uh, but I, I go a little bit, so I would say FTP. Uh, for me, the perfect if if I finish finish the twenty four hours with a sixty five percent FTP, so two thirds, that would be perfect. Never happened. 
Mm. Never, I don't know. You know, in the years that I set the records, I, I, the power meters were non-existent, so I cannot tell you. Right. Uh, but this time, also this time, I cannot tell you my numbers because uh, unfortunately my power meter died after two and a half hours. But for the first for the mm. first part, I had it, and it was, I was, uh, I mean, in, uh, I could hold that normally. You know, it was not pushing too much, and also my average was good. Uh, but then it drops, so. You have to find. I mean, you have to try. It's 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 mm. sounds stupid, you know. You cannot you cannot train twenty four hours, but you have to try. Right. So the more races you do, the more you get the feeling. Uh, how how much can you do? You know. Right. But uh, it's also always a good idea to start a little bit over the planned planned power, mm. and because it's 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 going to go down anyway. And then you just. Um, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to tell you, but I'm not sure that, that my old page is still on. I had a comparison of my uh, my uh, my 2010 record compared mm-hmm. to the previous indoor record, which was held by Michael Sikers, Michael Sikers, the mm-hmm. American guy, because mm-hmm. he also posted his data just hourly average. Mm-hmm. And if you looked at our average, the, the I mean the lines were like uh, on the graph, or like symmetrical. Just my speed was a little bit higher, but we all we all both hold that. First power for I mean the, the highest seven eight hours then it dropped down a little bit then for another until fifteen hour it was more or less level mm. and then it came down again down a little bit and then depends on where, where it stops so for me the I mean the the slowest hour uh, this time is different than in two thousand ten but I have data for, mm. for that in two thousand ten with my greatest uh, distance it was. Uh, 34, so almost 22 miles an hour. That was my, sh- my slowest yeah. hour. Uh, no, but then incredible. in the last three, three, two or three hours, it, it goes back again because right. you just see the finish, you know, and uh, you can mentally mm-hmm. make yourself push more. This time, this time, uh, yeah, I, like I told you, after 12 hours, my, my, I just, I'm not sure about the real, I mean, it might be the age. I have to try mm. it more again, you know, to see. Or it might be something, or it might be the the injury that I had uh, a month ago at Raw, you know. So it it, it discontinued my my training for a week or a week or half, week and a half. I don't know. That, there's there can be multiple reasons, but I just uh, mm. I just didn't uh, didn't hold on to the, to the speed that I'm usually able to, you know. Mm. I usually can go uh, at 34, 35 kilometers now, and that would bring me a lot closer to 900 kilometers. Mm. This this time I was more twenty uh, so thirty two thirty three k's an hour, which is twenty miles an hour twenty one, which is uh, I mean it was for sure enough enough for the record so I'm happy but but not enough for nine hundred kilometers. Mm. All right, welcome back to part two after the crazy thunderstorm there in Slovenia. Glad to have you back yeah. on the show, Marco. Glad everything's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, nothing nothing bad happened. Uh, at our place, but close by, 10 kilometers away, it was pretty big hailstorm, and uh, yeah, there was some damage to cars, uh, roofs, and stuff. So we were lucky uh, that it passed us. Wow. Okay. Now, based on your previous 10 race across Americas, are you? Would you say you're pretty used to that kind of weather and the hail? I mean, I know on occasions going across. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 Fortunately, no. I haven't. Uh, Lift. Uh, I mean, I didn't uh, get the hail yet. <laughs> I hope I don't ever. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, happened to me a couple of times here in training, you know. But you just try to find some shelter if you're lucky. Okay. In Ram, not there, yeah, but we were, we were, yeah. I don't know. Uh, heavy rains. Yeah, that happened a lot. Uh, yeah. Cold. You know, heat. Yeah, probably heat is the most common. And yeah, the the the, the stuff that is uh, um, so. I don't know. Uh, so ram, you know, uh, is just, that you come from heat from a hundred plus degree heat in a day. You come to you know forty, forty or even below mm-hmm. forty uh, in the in Colorado mountains. Right. So that's a huge difference, and that's why uh, so many people have lung issues, including me. Oh, that's interesting that you mentioned that because I'd love to go through some of your Facebook timeline again to kind of set the stage for you know, the play-by-play in your world record ride that you did. And you mentioned weather. And I know that initially your world record attempt was postponed due to bad weather. 
So tell me about that. What, what happened there? Yeah, first I have to thank uh, VUCA, you know, World, World Ultra Cycling Association, because, you know, this rule is quite new. I think it's this year's. Usually it was you, you um, registered your record attempt on a date and you had to stick to it. There was no way you could, you could, uh, you know, you just had to stick to it or you cancel it. And now the new rules uh, allow for a 24 hour plus minus uh, adjust, adjusting if it's necessary. And this time it really was, I mean, we were traveling to the venue uh, the evening before and we kind of look uh, at the weather. And I think first I got a call from the local guy because it's, uh, probably 150 miles from where we live. And he said, this is looking really bad. Are you still going through with it? So then we start, we all start looking. And it was bad. You know, the, the forecast was really uh, for, for heavy rain, not just a little bit of rain, heavy rain, thunderstorms mm-hmm. all the night. So when we got there, me, my, I mean, myself, Irma, a couple of crew members and uh, officials and uh, some of other guys in the organization, I mean, I was surprised because everybody uh, was was. I mean, everybody came there with a with a uh, vision of uh, just we cannot do it uh, the, on the date that we set it. I was a little bit afraid because you know people had their plans, you know, and it's not so easy to, to postpone it for 24 hours. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we just uh, unanimously we, we were for it, and we then we. Uh, we let uh, VUCA know, you know, that it's just uh, impossible. So they allowed us uh, to postpone it. Uh, we didn't postpone for, for 24 hours. We said we wait for next day. And from mm-hmm. morning, we just wait until the, the rain star- stops. Because it was forecasted, you know, to, to just go over, to, to go over through. And then uh, to, to be clear or dry. Right, uh, right. But unfortunately, uh, it started raining around uh, 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. in the evening. And it rained all through the night pretty heavily. I mean, you could hear it in my sleep. I could hear it. And then it stopped only in two, at 2 or 3 p.m. So it rained, what was that, 20, almost 20 hours, nonstop. Mm-hmm. So then it stops. Uh, I mean, we, were, we, have, we had a meeting at noon already, and uh, we, we got, I, we, didn't be, we just found each other because it's still raining and said, okay, let's postpone it for another two hours. I mean, the meeting. Then we met at two and it just it was just stopping so then we said okay let's do it uh, at five which was originally meant meant to start on you know the day before uh, and then it was it was already it was dry so mm. uh, lucky for us uh, i mean you had one uh, pretty big thunderstorm shower uh, two hours into it uh, which did uh, wet i mean i was wet from it but nothing major and uh, the the most damage was that uh, you know the, the roads were wet for another hour hour and a half and then you have to you know how how it is with the with the turns you just have to take it cautiously so I was losing some time there uh, but uh, mm. anyways it was uh, early enough in the day so that the sun did dry me out and I didn't have to change or something uh, so it oh, was not good. a big deal yeah otherwise that would have slowed you down even more so sure. yeah. it does sound like there's a lot of communication involved in being able to not just plan for and actually execute a a ride of this nature, but also because it is an official world record uh, attempt at the time. So in terms of the official that actually tracks all of this to make it official, how do, how does that work? And, you know, what's the difficulty there when it comes to, you know, having to postpone things? I mean, as you mentioned, that's already a given. So I guess everybody is already making plans and provisions for those situations, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, it never happened to me before, but so the the problem here is, you know, because people uh, give you, you know, they're volunteers, uh, mm-hmm. mostly, or all of us were volunteers. Uh, so they give their time and it's just hard, you know, to us. Uh, for some, I, I would, I would uh, understand if somebody would say, sorry, I'm just having uh, other, other plans for the, the next day. Mm. And we would have to make do somehow. The problem would be officials, but the, both of the officials, uh, you know, they were already there and uh, it wasn't a big deal, you know. Um, so we just prolonged their, their rooms, the hotel stays and stuff. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's just, uh, accord- I mean, um, as far as the association goes, VUCA, it's just, yeah, it's, uh, the, the, you have to be in contact. Uh, I mean, before the race, uh, I mean, you, you have a lot, a lot, lot of paperwork also to do so it's it's a lot of work it's not a 
it's not just you know show up at the start and uh, do your thing you know race right. for whatever hours you have planned and then you go home even after after the race you know it's uh, yeah, there's some paperwork <laughs> so i have to say uh, i was the um, the last piece of the paperwork was my so the rider summary uh, um, which you know uh, you know i i needed a couple of days first to uh, <laughs> To clear my head and there was some other stuff to to take care of so yesterday i wrote it down so yesterday the last piece of pipe paperwork went to the VUCA. so now they have it all and now they usually they're really good at this uh larry osland is the the chair the record chair and he's really mm-hmm. doing a great job and the the guy who did the, it previously i won't remember the name now but the, he, he did all my my previous i don't know four five six however whatever number of records and they really do a great job. I mean, it's uh, it's all volunteering jobs. So I, I have to say my hats off to them because it's it's a lot. You know, it's not just me. You know, you know, a week before me there was Ralph Dizeviscor. You know, the Luxembourg guy did the, yeah. the similar record out out of track. And there's some other records uh, all all the time. It's especially this year with COVID. You know, people don't have races, so it's a lot more. Uh, record attempts that usually than usually so it's a lot of work mm. yeah i've seen that also even in the professional road racing uh scene a lot of people starting to do the, those ever ever resting challenges yeah. you know which was a, a year ago i think it was a joke for them and now and now yeah they, they yeah they, they need a challenge so it's 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 kind of awesome to watch you know contador going for resting oh yeah definitely yeah now, a uh, side note, have you ever done an Everest uh, challenge? Or yeah, yeah my first, I was the first one in Slovenia, actually. I had to, uh, huh. yeah. Uh, I think my first one is, was in 2017. I'm not, now we have to, I have to look at the Everest page. But uh, I, I did two uh, outside, so the next year I did the second one, uh, hmm. which was the uh, first one was just, uh, the, the climb was not the fastest, you know, especially descent was like, very curry <laughs> so the second one was a lot faster so the first yeah. one i did in 14 hours and a half the second one in 12 hours and then this Very year nice. this winter i did the zwift so the you know oh. hard zwift. wow that was cool i mean i like that uh, a lot because you know it's it, it's not i mean it's uh, a lot safer you know you cannot crash or something so it's right 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 uh, and on downhill you can you can do your stuff you can even stretch you can eat a little bit so it's uh, it's a little bit easy easier you know uh i mean a little yeah. bit easier yeah than outside o- always a lot of fun to be had in the ultra cycling world it seems uh, uh never a challenge that is uh not new out there always something there to challenge us all right yeah and it's true. so it yeah. definitely sounds like there is t- a ton of project management involved in organization communication really for a lot of the ultra events especially if it's a multi-day event or a world record setting attempt like you did yeah, it is yeah. So it's a it's a big effort, and as you mentioned, it also requires a lot of volunteers. Which I know, even here in California, where we have a large double century, uh, you know, a series of of races, sure. uh, yeah. a lot of a lot of volunteers are required for that. And that's one of the things that I love about the ultra cycling family that it really is that it's a family of people that that know the struggle and like supporting people in that to be yeah. able to learn and grow and you know uh, be successful. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And so, of course, you have that same heart because you are also a coach. So tell me a bit about that. Yeah, I mean, and also, I mean, I did some volunteering when, I, you know, the time is, is <laughs> that I don't have much time here. But I did, uh, I did uh, like you said, um, uh, that I officiated for him. That was really, uh, I don't know, interesting. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm really happy that I tried it. And I did the crew chief. I was a crew chief in Ram, so I did crewing. And I have to say that I much rather do racing than uh, than crewing because it's so stressful. Uh-huh. I mean, for a rider, it's easy. You know, you just push on the pedals. You know, you do your thing, and people are taking. You know, say yourself, people are taking care of you 24 hours a day. You, right. you get almost everything you d- desire. If they can, they can. They yeah, get yeah. it for you. Uh, but crewing is really. Uh, I mean, uh, heads off to everybody who does that. Mm. especially to micro i mean my 10 crews you know uh some a lot of people did uh, did it more times more than one time but you uh, cannot you cannot take the same crew every time because it takes you know three weeks every year and people mm. have families so so it's kind of uh, that's that's another challenge you know uh, getting the 
But now we all, <laughs> sorry, we all, we already, uh, yeah, I, or, I turned away from the question here. So the coaching no, no, thing no. is, uh, the coaching thing I, I used to, I mean, even from my start, it, maybe not 2000, but yeah, from the start I did coach myself, but then, you know, with the experience, people approached me and I did some, some coaching here and there first for, for I think the first couple was for were for um, race around Slovenia, for, so for local guys guys mm. that I have, and then it just grew somehow. And then uh, uh, the client came, which kind of insisted that I gave him full time service, you know, because I, I used to be, I mean, I used to have the normal job, forty hours a week uh, plus mm. train plus my training plus uh, trying to make some uh, coaching work. And then I had to decide, you know, uh, and I did. Uh, I was fortunate enough that, you know, I'm fortunate that Irma, Irma understand it. And uh, after discussion, she said, okay, let's try. It was a bit of a, you know, unknown uh, because I had to leave my job. So my... <laughs> now, how long, ago my was, mom, how long ago was that? That's seven years ago, 2013. Yeah, seven years ago. So I guess it it's was, safe to say that it has been working out just fine? Uh, it, it has, yeah. But yeah, like I told, I did tell my mom because I knew she would be crazy worried, and she was. I don't know how <laughs> she found out, but a couple of months later, she, mm. she, she, she comes and Marco, what did you do? And it's almost <laughs> in tears, you know. And uh, now it's uh, it's okay because she sees mm. that it's uh, it's working and now it's. I, I think uh, it's so. fair to say that that you are an entrepreneur. Then would you say that ultra riding has played a role in? given you the confidence and you know everything that you kind of need to be able to make that leap and to be able to do this yeah i think so i mean all the all the i mean all my life has been in sports so even before ultra uh, so you get that discipline from sport you know that's that's why it's so important uh, to try to get your kids <laughs> I, i'm laughing because my kids are not uh, big sportsmen themselves you know I, they did try a couple of things but uh, they didn't uh, hang in there but yeah, it's it's really important because it gives you a discipline, it gives you motivation. I don't know, it's just and every, every, everything helped me for sure. And the ultra cycling and the, all the experience. That's why, I mean, I I don't have a big business. Uh, I don't even dream about it, you know, because I like to have mm. a small number of clients, and so you can devote more of yourself. Mm. So far, I'm still the only coach, and I not thinking yet, you know, to to. Know how hire maybe somebody else because I can do uh, the number that I have. I can do easily myself. But yeah, like like we said in the first show, uh, this year I was supposed to have uh, four or five people in REM and uh, mm. I guess three or four in RAW. Mm. So it was yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's quite a lot. Yeah, and uh, you know, so a lot of yeah, this pandemic just changed changed a lot for mm. everybody. So it's. Uh, um, yeah, we are hoping that it it goes away soon, and we can travel and we can uh, do our own thing, you know. Because uh, yeah, that's what we love. You know, cycling is is a sport that changed my life for sure, um, for for the better. Yeah, well, it's great to have you as a role model for a lot of people. But more than that, you being able to offer your wisdom, your, all of your experience, and just your professional services as a coach. I think that's helping a lot of people. And as you mentioned, what's that like six, seven, eight people that you are uh, actively coaching who were going to do some of the largest and most difficult ultra events in the world. So I think that speaks a lot about um, your credibility and what people think of you. So it's really an honor to be able to chat with you and to learn more about even what you're doing yourself because a lot of coaches, maybe they're retired athletes, but you're still very much at it. In fact, you know, you just set, well, two new world records just a few days ago. So that's, that's and really cool. It's, it's a number, you know, if you, if, when you, when we, we get, it's a number because before, you know, before, during the ride, you, you also have 100 uh, kilometers and 100 miles and 200, 200 and three and three. Mm. And I guess I broke... All of them for 50 plus, that's for sure. And uh, probably half of them for overall records also. So it's, a, you know, I think it was 12, 12 records. Wow. That is incredible, yeah. Marco. <laughs> I, I do want to go back to your, your Facebook page here and we could take a look at some of the other posts that I, I think your wife Irma helped you uh, do so well. Yeah, and sure. I mean, so I was always like... on the sidelines, so she does the all the social media during the race. I mean, otherwise I do it myself, but during the race, no. 
Right. I just give some interviews if if I can. Otherwise, it's it's her job. Yeah, she does she does a splendid job of it. Yeah, she definitely does. I'm I have a bunch of tabs here pulled up with the different posts that I saw along the way, and I thought they they made for a good timeline. So we just we had left off in discussing the weather. So there was bad weather. You postponed it. It was almost twenty four hours, but it looks like you were able to start finally five p.m. Uh, local yeah, time. Now that was that was Saturday. That was Saturday, exactly Saturday. 24 hours after when it was supposed to happen, yeah. Hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. That's a, so that, is that your, your, your favorite bike right there? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> no, that's my tippy bike, you know. Oh. Uh, there was a thing uh, this year, um, you know, the COVID, the, the pandemic, uh, the Spiegel bikes unfortunately couldn't, uh, you know, the, we, uh, the, they couldn't provide the TT frame. The TT mm. bike. So I used my old uh, Trek Speed Concept, which I uh, covered in Balach Coaching because. <laughs> so it looks like my bike, personal. Uh, and yeah, but yeah, um, I used the, the, my favorite one, Spiegel San Marino. I use it for uh, after I finished the 24 hours because it's uh, much more comfortable and I was in a lot of pain. Uh, mm. My upper body from this position, you know, it's just uh, mm. pretty aggressive. So, so the last four, four and a half hours I did on my, my favorite bike. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. So the majority of the time you were here in this TT and, yeah. and just that position, it really took a toll on you over time. Now in your past world record attempts or your world records that you set in the past 2008 and 2010, mm -hmm. um, were you able to stay in the TT bike the entire time or did the same thing kind of happen towards the end where you had I mean, to for switch? 24 hours? Yeah. Especially the first one I did at that time was Orbea. I don't know what's the name of TT bike, but really, really fast bike. Unfortunately, it got stolen a couple of years later. Mm. Uh, that you saw it, of course. And I did that, that one. That's my, let me think, probably my, my, I mean, for sure, my only world record that I never stopped. <laughs> that was, that's a, an accomplishment by itself. Mm. So I did, the, you know, even the peeing from the bike in 24 hours, I was rolling nonstop without even a second oh. of stop. Which one was this? 2008 or 2008? 2008. 2008, yeah. your very first one. Yeah, 2010, Incredible. I did it on um, felt, felt bike. Fast, fast one again, you know, the TT bike. Uh, and I did it. It was uh, kind of the same story as here, 24 hours on a TT bike. And uh, after the 24 hours, we stopped and the... Uh, celebrated a little and some some massage and then i continued with the road so i had a road hmm. which is just just more comfortable a little bit and they had in fact during that ride i had a puncture so for for a couple of uh, loops in in between uh, i also went with the road air road and then they fixed my tt bike and then i jumped back on the tt hmm. so yeah that's uh, so yeah that for 24 hours i i mean i just stick to the tt it's no problem Mm. Uh, now you you mentioned that in 2008 you rode nonstop for 24 hours. So I mean, in terms of bathroom breaks, I guess that was just on the bike. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that was outdoor yeah. track, so it can be you know on indoor track. There's no way. So or mm. now I'm mixing already. But 2010, it just couldn't be done because it's wooden track, and you just uh, <laughs> you do you're yeah. doomed if you do if pee on the bike. So yeah, I had to stop. Yeah. I had probably 20 minutes of stoppage time. But yeah, in in, in uh, outdoor track, I did uh, yeah uh, all the ping um, from the, off the bike. Yeah. So uh, the, I was lucky that the uh, spectators were only on one side <laughs> of the track, so I can do it on the yeah. other side easily and on the grass. So I did a little bit larger loop. Right. Yeah, but yeah, uh, and I didn't have any problems like this time. So no number two needed, which is uh, quite mm. important because you lose uh, five to ten minutes. Right. You have to have to do this. Yeah. Yeah, and I do want to get back to that because I know there was a delay, but just taking a look at some of these other photos sure. here at the starting line, I see there's quite a few people out there. Is is the lady who's uh, giving you the start, is that one of the officials? No, no, that's actually the local lady. She's a wife, mayor's wife. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, we kind of asked the mayor to do it, but she's more, I mean, she's fam She's a famous person in Slovenia. Mm. Used to be a really good sports person. She was a world champion. In bow, bowling, yeah, bowling. Oh, for very interesting. Probably years, uh, and I mean, uh, she stopped probably fifteen something years ago, but she was world champ a couple of times, so she was uh, she's really well known. So that's why Mir said, let's let's give her that, you know, the starting 
flag and yeah why not so mm. so she was happy to do it and uh, yeah that's pretty cool very exciting uh yeah. your your world record uh world records definitely attract a lot of people out and i know we'll be able to discuss that later as well i know some mm. people other cyclists even came to visit you but tell me a little yeah. bit more about your bike setup here so i see you got you have a full disc on the back you have a deep rim on the front what kind of uh gearing are you using just something standard yeah it's a standard tt uh, I mean, cassette is 1121, I guess. And uh, in the front, I have a, a larger chain ring, yeah, not the normal one, but the 5542. So this time I never used the small chain ring, for sure. Uh, so it stayed on 55 all the time. And I guess uh, it was mostly 55, 15, 14, 13 for the, for the first uh, six, seven hours, for sure, when I was still flying. Mm. Uh, after that, uh, I think I never went below uh, 55, 16 or 17 maybe. So it was yeah, pretty big gear. Yeah. Mm. Now, would you say through the 24 hours, are you, are you targeting a certain uh, RPMs or how does that factor in? Actually, no, I go by feel because uh, mm. I'm usually quite, uh, I, I like to uh, spin. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a big gear measure like mm-hmm. Shona Hogan, maybe, maybe you know her. She's an example of that, you know, the, somebody who really likes slow, slow RPMs. Yeah. So, but but uh, in uh, in this kind of event, you just you just slow down a little bit. So I'm guessing my average is probably below eighty, probably seventy five. But but for if you if you check the first first hours, uh, I'm sure it was eighty five to ninety RPMs. But I'm not. I'm just uh, go by feeling. I try to go fast. I. I do look at the power meter though. I do try to not to push, not to push, not to, to push too hard. Yeah. Uh, so it was. Uh, I think I stayed around. Uh, let me think. Seventy-five percent of FTP for the first hours, mm. while it was still possible. <laughs> you know, at the end it, it just. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I don't have the data because uh, I right. don't know what happened. But after two and a half hours, my power meter stopped working. I, it did drive yeah. me crazy a little bit because you don't mm-hmm. see those numbers anymore. But it just, I, I already, I mean, I have, I have, you know, thirty-five years experience, and uh, this mm-hmm. was a loop, so I could, uh, I could see my uh, my speed, you know, my average speed, and uh, I could, I could pretty easily uh, measure my 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 input, uh, you know, by just by speed. Mm. So your power meter wasn't working. Were you able to get the speed from a different sensor? Or are you saying yeah, no speed? Speed worked, yeah, you know, because just power. Okay. Uh, you yeah. know, I had Garmin, so speed worked all the time, but just the power d- dropped. I don't know in for two hours. I can tell you, uh, for two hours and ten minutes, while it still worked, uh, my my average was two seventy one watts, which was perfect by mm-hmm. my standards. You know, it's uh, a little bit over what I was exp- I, w- I would expect for average. So, uh, but it was uh, just perfectly, you know. Sometimes in Borrego, if I can have, uh, name an example, mm. last year in Borrego, you know, we have other guys competing. So, I mean, you, drafting is not allowed, but you always see guys, you know, uh, and some some people push a little bit too hard from start. Mm. And if you're competitive as I am, you, do, you just uh, don't like to leave them go. So mm-hmm. last, last, last year in Borrego, the first two hours, so probably my, my average power was 300 watts, which is way... Wow about what and that's why i died i mean died. that's why at the end i was crawling i was just uh, unbelievable i couldn't make 500 miles even which was disappointing for me mm. but yeah that's that's why it's it's really good to have power meter at least for the first uh, for the first part because you're really strong i mean you could i could easily do three 320 watts for a couple of hours mm. but then i would just uh, have to stop or something i don't know so right right that's why yeah so as you mentioned, you definitely also feel feel you, you're accustomed to how your body feels, and you're able to pace yourself based on that. So that's that's excellent, and I think a lot of us as ultra riders, I mean, eventually, of course, you do learn that, and you learn to not rely sure. just on your power meter. Day by day yeah. changes, the weather conditions can be different. So something we always and have. The more to you do it, you know, the more experience you have, the, the easier it is to do right. so. Yeah, right, right. So I see in this photo there is somebody on the motorcycle. Is that one of the officials? No official, you know the van, you see the van, the van oh. on the oh, on the left, left side, side yeah. of the picture. Mm-hmm. That was the van that was uh, behind me all the time, except uh, one time mm-hmm. when they had to uh, stop for the gasoline. 
Mm. And a couple of times, you know, when officials changed, you know, but that was just for a couple of seconds and then they sped behind me. And uh, this was just uh, part of the, the team, the crew. Uh, mm. So we had the motorcycle r- riding uh, 100, 200 uh, meters in front of me just, you know, to, to make sure that people know that you're coming. And if, uh, I don't know, some, some danger was approaching, you could signal us or signal them to, to get out of the way, you know. Mm couple of times tractor you know uh, was trying to to uh, get on the road in front of me and he just politely stopped him so mm. that's, that's, i'm looking back at this first photo i i noticed that there are cars on the road so this yeah. loop that you're doing it is still open to the to sure, the sure. public yeah. right all, okay. all the time that's why you saw in the previous photo i was on the mm-hmm. actually not on the road or one mm-hmm. before i was in this uh, bus station because the traffic was still here Mm. was still going so we just we just uh, didn't want to stop it for more time than needed so one minute before the start i just went in the middle of the road and they stopped mm. the, the the traffic behind me uh, right. and otherwise it was the traffic all the time yeah so uh, yeah a lot of details to account for you would think it's just some barren yeah. land and you're just riding free there's you know nothing yeah. to have to worry about but actually there's quite a lot of details involved to execute this well and yeah. talking about details i also noticed here we've got a nice a, a signage here, Marco Ballo. So it looks yeah. like, man, you guys went all out and this is as official as it can no, this, get. This is why I love this community. You know, this is uh, the community where we do this, uh, our, our slow 24 hours uh, race, the drafting race usually, but this year it had to be canceled. So mm. they're really supportive. Uh, you know, the mayor and all his team are with us and uh, that's, they surprised me with this. We didn't plan on it. So they did it uh, by themselves and it was cool to see. Yeah. Mm. That's so cool. All right, this must be the start there. Yeah, that was it. So, I mean, how anxious were you to just get started, especially because there was a delay? I mean, were you getting yeah. anxious a week before, a month before? You know, when did that start building up? Yeah, a couple of days before. I mean, not anxious. A couple of days. You, you know, I mean, you get, get you start getting nervous, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, you still have all those pieces to to put together, and uh, just nervous. The, the, it's probably the same as in RAM, you know, because yeah. everything is just hectic the last couple of days and then when you're on start line it just eases off and it's just perfect the the feeling on the start line, it's it's not fear or something it's just yeah, yeah. elation almost because you're happy to be there and oh, yeah. now you, your job is only to ride as fast as you can and it's you know it's yeah. what, what i like to do so it's uh this it is, was this a big is a big time. journey just to get to the starting line right yeah, and true, so yeah. you get excited to be able after all that training and that work to be able to actually uh, put into practice uh, what you what you've been practicing and and execute yeah, it's that. the same for everybody especially yeah. you know especially for Ir- Irma you know is my my uh, I don't know assistant or even you can call her my boss <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know yeah. she does a lot you know the paper wise and everything so it's nervous for her too maybe even more mm-hmm. than for me and before the race I can feel the nervousness more than I do my my own mm-hmm. but then after two or three hours when we st- Start you know, communicating with you know the, from the car. You just you can see it. she's as happy as me. You know, it, mm. you can feel her smile. You know, by just the way he, she talks. So it's it's really. Then after the start, this, those first first hours are are usually really enjoyable. Mm. Yeah, that's really sweet that she is so supportive, and you guys are able to do this together and for many many years. And yeah. I had a question here. So you're at the start line, excited to start. Now, tell me about bathroom breaks. Are you the kind of guy that typically, you know, as you're getting closer to the starting line, you always feel, have, uh, you feel like you need to use the bathroom? I mean, you know, before you got to the start line, did you just use the bathroom again a few yeah, times? Yeah, or? <laughs> yeah, I did pee before because you just, yeah. uh, you know, you have to drink a lot because it's, it's summer. So even if it's not sunny, it was humid and uh, I did drink a lot. And you know mm. that you're going to have to sometime and you don't want to do it too soon so yeah i did probably five minutes before the start i did use the bathroom uh as far as number two i i did it in the morning as as normally so it was supposed to be all according to plan and usually if you're la- i mean if you're lucky more most of my 24 hours if i'm not in trouble are i can do without having to do number two but mm. this this was different we'll talk about it later but yeah you always count on pain you know and i i I'm an old rider, so I know how to do it uh, mm. from the bike. This 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 time was a little bit. The only tricky part was, you know, that there was a camera in the car behind me. You know, we had a live stream, 
which I hear is mm. not, wasn't working all the time, but it was some. So I had to signal them to stay a little bit farther behind me, you know, not to, <laughs> not to feel me when, I, when yeah. I'm doing it on the bike. You know, so. But yeah. I didn't do it a lot uh, because, uh, as we'll talk later, I had to stop uh, for number right. two, and that was the first one. Then I did it uh, once from the bike, and then, then uh, the, the second day it was so windy that, uh, and, you know, you're tired, so it just... Mm. Uh, we cannot do Too it with bikes, so I had to stop. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting that I see on your bike here. So you only carry one bottle with you at a time, and it's I see it's in the in the uh, bottle holder at the back, and not the one yeah. on the the tube, uh, the the slanted tube. Now, tell me about that, because typically for me at least, I like having it in the front um, holder because yeah. it's a little easier. Why do you have it in the back one? <laughs> you know, maybe we should we shouldn't because. There's so many details I could have done better, you know, uh, mm. probably uh, Strasser would tell, you know, she, he's, he's a big uh, fan of uh, aerodynamics, you know, and uh, mm. if you see his bike, he, he doesn't have uh, bottle holders any, uh, anywhere on the frame. So he only has mm. the behind the seat, which is the most aero. Uh, why, why do I have, I only have one because there's a car behind me, so I don't, there's no need for two. Mm. And I read somewhere that uh, this one on the, is it uh, how does it for situ is more aero than if you have it on the on the the other one mm. so that's that's the only reason and uh, also pretty pretty f- efficient you know of uh, getting the drink from mm. it and i was thinking i was uh, I, I must say i was thinking about uh, changing it you know just take taking the the water holders off and making i mean having the one behind the seat but I'm just not used to it, and uh, it was uh, I don't know too risky, mm-hmm. you know, to then drop it and then you you lose more aero when when you know the when the van is com- coming and you you have to mm-hmm. take it from the van, so it just didn't make sense. But otherwise, yeah, that's that's the reason uh, because I I read somewhere that it's more aero, but okay. still less aero than behind the seat. So sure. Now, how about in the race across America or really any of the ultra events you do? Is it a similar setup like this? If you have, yeah, if but you have usually a in following. Ram, I usually have both uh, both uh, bottles because it's oh, so do. hot. Usually, one is the thermal one with ice, because you know yourself uh, when it's hot in California, uh, California Arizona, yeah. uh, and you get really cold uh, drinks in the normal bottle in five minutes. It's soup. It's really <laughs> hot. Right. So, so I usually take uh, just one uh, thermal with the ice in it, and then you can you can. Uh, have make your temperature you know just have a sip of this super warm warm electrolytes and then add mm. some ice water and then it it levels so it's it's mm. a nice temperature so the one that you you want yeah. so yeah in, in ram nice. i usually have both both uh, water bottles on the frame okay interesting sometimes and sometimes in in rams uh, i use uh, uh it's, if it's really hot i use the sprinkling system so i have another bottle Ah. Uh, by handlebars on the system, it's called Spruza. Spruza, I don't know. Ah. It was a mist, and it's really you know it's, it releases this mist. You know, you've probably seen it in pumps in ev- everywhere in California, I guess. You know, when mm. they use for cooling, and it really cools you down. So that's mm. that's what helps me a lot. And it, but this yeah, pretty time, unique. You know, I actually haven't personally seen that myself. And and the mist is yeah. able to get you uh, pretty well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you just spray your face, mostly your face, mm. your neck, and if you open your jersey, your mm. chest, and it's really helpful. I mean, it, it mm. changes. The only the only thing is, it's the size is a little bit smaller, so it's only one deciliter, one and a half. So it, even it's really hot, it it lasts maybe half an hour, forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. So I have to change it a lot, uh, and sometimes I, we do connect it with the water bottle on the on the frame. Uh, but yeah, that's another story. This time mm-hmm. it just, and it's not aero, so even if it was hot, I, I guess I would just spray myself from the water bottle, not, right, not right. from the system, yeah. Yeah, well, very, very nice kit that you have and bike setup. That's just a beautiful bike. I, I see even you have some custom paint there, Ballo Coaching written. Yeah, that's, that's, what, really that's cool. what I told you, because, you know, uh, if you have a Spiegel sponsorship and I just, I asked them if they allow me to use a track bike, actually. Hmm. Of course, they did. They did, you know, because uh, they were unfortunately we we couldn't get the uh, the Spiegel one uh, this year. But I just uh, wanted to, you know, to cover it with something, and hmm. you know, why not uh, 
make some make some uh, commercial for my business. Yeah, mm. and it, it looks nice. It's only the it's only a sticker, you know, but it's really professionally made. I like I like how it looks. Yeah, it looks great. It really matches yeah. your entire setup here. Yeah, Definitely yeah. a world record setting uh, <laughs> outfit and and equipment. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I also noticed on your, your bike here, I see the arrow bars, they, they are raised up. The, just the, the extension, you mean? Or? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I was playing with it a little bit because some triathletes, some, some studies, I, I've never been myself to a wind tunnel, which I might mm. still do if, if I go for another one of those records, I don't know. Mm. But yeah, some studies show that uh, it's a more arrow if you have more... Uh, raised setup and i was playing with it uh the last couple of weeks but it just didn't feel right you know i, I had it uh, a lot more extensive <laughs> i mean raised a little a lot more but it just didn't feel right so i just uh, I, it's almost it's almost horizontal so this is what it what works best for me mm. now i i see something at the back of your saddle what is that is that a, a mud yeah, guard? sorry that's that didn't look good but uh, we expected more rain so that's just okay. something to keep it dry you know mm. when the roads are wet and you know it sprays from your from your rear wheel directed to your bump right, right. right. so it, it's not healthy i mean it's not good and it doesn't feel good so mm. this is just the how they call it uh, s saver <laughs> no it's yeah. yeah it's written on it uh, it just and then, then we left it on. I don't know. It just le- looks like some kind of uh, spoiler, some kind of speed thing. You know, it just. Yeah. yeah I like the look. It's a yeah. nice effect. <laughs> Maybe you yeah, should. Kind of, uh, when yeah. you look at the videos, it's funny because it's, it goes yeah. like uh, like your tail or something. I like. But right. It, yeah, it was there just. And I was lucky because uh, with that shower uh, later, I don't know, in the second hour, mm. I would be a lot more wet if I didn't have this one on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there, there's you in action. Definitely adds to the effect. You look really fast with that spoiler on the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it'll become a trend now after you say Yeah, you know, who knows, yeah. <laughs> so I see out on the course, different spectators cheering you on. Yeah, there was a lot of other cool. really like, uh, you yeah. know, this, when we show this photo, you can also see uh, behind mm-hmm. my, uh, yeah, uh, behind, uh, below my seat, you know, there's uh, mm. uh, this so. thing, you know, like a box. Right. Yeah. Okay. This what, one, do you, yeah. what do you have in there? Yeah, I mean, nothing because uh, oh. usually when I train, I have the you know the spare tubes and uh, levers and stuff and uh, mm. gas pumps and whatever you have. But this this was empty. But uh, actually, it makes it more air mm. and faster uh, mm. the bike itself. So that was tested by by company itself, and so that's why I left it on uh, because mm. it's just uh, faster. Yeah. Yeah, and looks looks great. Now I see the road here. I'm not sure what the condition is. Can you talk a little bit about that throughout the whole loop? I mean, yeah, the the loop was uh, three three fourths were perfect. I mean, uh, as far as asphalt goes, and uh, one fourth was really really bad. That's that's what probably you've seen after the race. My injuries on my forearms mm. uh, because that that was really bad piece of road, and I didn't want to uh, go from. I mean go from my aero extensions just kept kept there and they just uh yeah, crushed my crushed my forearms uh but yeah it was just uh it's nothing we can we could do about it you know i mean we i could i could find the line that was not dangerous because there were some really big holes there mm. but they they did uh, um, mark them with the with the red paint so even in the night i could i could i mean there was no problem you know uh uh, seeing them and going around uh, but uh, i just had to find my way and uh, yeah some parts were just uh, the road was so bad that you just had to just had to go through it and just mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and i think that that is different. something that's quite common in a lot of these races especially the race across america you know this this event that you just did a lot of people don't realize the different conditions not just the weather conditions but yeah. you know there could be dogs wild dogs there could be uh-huh. other animals that are dangerous yeah. in the road especially on a descent the road conditions yeah. all across america especially and even on this shorter uh, loop that you were doing all yeah. kinds of conditions and you yeah. actually sustained some uh, level of injury from that to your forearms yeah a little bit yeah, yeah. yeah i mean it's, i i even yeah, even in borrego in 24 hour world championships you know mm. the road is uh, really bad mm. as bad as here uh, so we always get some some bruises here, uh, but yeah, just part right. of the 
part of the and, sports. And I can imagine being in the TT position like this with the bumpy roads that, um, you know, you are riding in a very stiff frame here, I'd imagine, on your TT bike. Yeah, so you feel sure. every, every bump, right? You do, yeah. Mm. I mean, I don't, I don't have a, a very high tire pressure. I mean, you used to have a lot more, but now I'm riding 9,500 PSI. Mm. Uh, which is a lot more. I, I remember at the times, I mean, but it was 20 years ago when for TT, for time trials, we used to have, use 11, 12 bars. What's that? 160, I, I'm thinking. <laughs> mm. So that was that was hard. But this this is a, a little bit more comfy, uh, just from the tires. Yeah. Right. Now, now, what width of a tire are you using there? 25, 28? 25, yeah. 25? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, tubulars. Tubulars for this, for... For the fastest wheels, I use tubulars. Yeah. Mm. And now, do you have spare wheels that you could easily swap in and out on this bike? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I have a pair. I mean, I have the for the rear one. I don't have the spare disc, unfortunately, but I have the the pair of the front. You know, so the same eighty-eight millimeters. Mm -hmm. So if I had a puncture on a disc, I would just uh, use the the pair of the front one. Uh, okay. And then probably they, that was the plan. They would they would uh, change the tire weight because you had to glue it so probably after a couple of hours we would just stop and uh, put the disc back on again mm. yeah, but i was fortunate enough uh, not to have any flats uh, because it that, that takes time every time you know? right because the the clock doesn't stop ticking right if you get a flat yeah. right of course not yeah yeah hmm. yeah a lot of a lot of details let's let's move along here so let's see you did mention earlier it looks like you were just on your second lap and there was still rain. I could see the roads are okay. wet here. How did that play into, you know, just the, the condition of riding, just how you felt? I mean, the, what, what yeah, was the I mean, temperature? It wasn't perfect, more more uh, mentally, you know, because I was kind of looking forward because the rain stopped, was supposed to stop. It did stop, yeah. Mm. And it was dry, so I was, uh, you know, it, it's always different, you know. And then the, it, they didn't take the photo during, but it was really heavy for only five or ten minutes. And then you can mm. see the roads are really, uh, really wet. And that, so that 10 minutes were bad because it, uh, there was some wind, you know, and it stopped me a little bit. Uh, mm. Mentally, it was just kind of, oh, no, it's shit again. <laughs> Something, <laughs> you know, going wrong. And then after that, uh, it took, uh, I mean, the, the flat, those, the straight uh, road did, uh, did uh, dry out pretty quickly. But uh, just the turns, they stayed uh, wet for, I don't know, at least an hour, hour and a half. And, uh, you know, I have to be really careful. I didn't want to risk, you know, falling. I mean, yeah, I know I, I, I probably usually don't injure yourself much, you know, but, uh, you know, you get mm. stiff and bruising and just, mm. so I, I took it really care, uh, carefully. And now, that, that how many turns, how many turns were there in this course? Yeah, there was four. There was actually, I mean, it was not, a, uh, you know, four by four. But it was four turns actually. Yeah. Mm. Four, uh, two of them were ninety. Uh, no, the, what's the angle? The angle name ninety degrees. Mm -hmm. So pretty good. They could they could. Uh, if you saw one was uh, one was a little bit tricky because you, there was house and you couldn't see the the coming traffic. Mm. So that was tricky. Okay, you had to slow down a little bit. The other one was uh, pretty open. So if there was nobody coming, I could take it at I don't know twenty twenty miles an hour, twenty one, twenty two. Okay. The other two were tricky because they were uh, roundabouts uh, and uh, not not ninety percent, but more than ninety. You know, I had to take the first exit, but it was more than ninety, so it was mm. pretty sharp. So the, those were those were slow, even even in dry, but in wet, it was just uh, uh, like walking almost, you know, ten miles an hour, even less. Yeah. So all of that adds adds to the kind of a slowdown in terms of your overall time, right? Because how many laps did you end up doing? It does, yeah, yeah, fifty laps for a thousand kilometers. It was only mm. almost twenty kilometers uh, lap. Mm. So fifty laps for for a thousand. Yeah. Right. Right. So even if even if each of those four turns just slowed you down by a second, that's already yeah. two hundred seconds over three minutes in terms of sure, the time. Sure. Mm. But it was yeah, yeah, it was more probably. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's, uh, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, it doesn't slow you that much when you're fresh for the first, you know, ten, twelve hours. Mm. I mean, it's easy to get back to speed, but after your legs are sore, it's it's more. You can feel it more. You know, it just takes yeah. longer. You know, to get to get to the to the racing speed again. Right. Yeah. 
yeah, it definitely takes a toll on you mentally just having to do that again when you know if it wasn't what you could have just kept going. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, glad the weather did work out well for you and you were able to keep going. Let's see here, 300 kilometers in seven hours, 46 minutes. Wow, that's that's fast time. Night is dry and yeah. just over 10 degrees Celsius. So that's that's a bit on the chilly side, right? Yeah, night was a little yeah. bit chill, but it was expected and it, I, I didn't feel the, uh, the cold because I was still... Uh, racing i mean i was still mm. pushing the power uh, and i did put on i mean uh, over the the skin suit uh, so okay. uh, we probably skipped after five and hours and some i had to uh, had this bathroom break you know for number two uh, which wasn't planned but i just had to be done because i had some diarrhea mm. and it took a little bit uh, more than usually so around 10 11 minutes but I, I could see because it was already night that it's going to get uh, cold and I was sweat. I was sweaty or a lot. I mean, so I did put on a um, uh, vest of sorts. Maybe, no, not a vest, a jersey. So it was uh, tight. It was aero, mm. but enough, enough to keep me warm. So I didn't have any, any problems with, uh, with cold. So I, I didn't need, the, I just had summer gloves on the, the normal, no, without fingers. And I didn't feel the cold uh, on the, on my feet, there was the, those titty, titty covers, really thin. Mm. Uh, which, so I, did, I, I was pretty good. I mean, that was not a problem. So I didn't need any, any extra stops, you know, for, for maybe putting the clothes on or off or something. So, mm. so you took a 10, 11 minute uh, unplanned bathroom stop. Would you say that trying to make up that time it, it was more difficult than whatever benefit you might have got from that 10 minutes of rest? Yeah, no, you you don't you, you cannot get this back because you just right. and it, it, it does bring your average speeds down a lot. <laughs> probably mm. you can probably check for fifth to six hours. There's on my website. There's a number. Probably went from forty point five kilometers an hour to thirty nine something. So for one kilometer an hour, mm. but yeah, it just had to be done. You, you know, if you, first you you have to do it. Uh, you. Even if you fight it, you cannot push the pedals norm as you normally <laughs> could do if you yeah. have to, you know, fight it. Uh, so it had to be done. And it, I'm, I'm happy that I, I, it's, I mean, I, I stuck it out a little bit longer because it just, uh, then it, I didn't need it anymore, you know, for the whole race. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just something that you don't plan for and it's not perfect and it's a little bit annoying. And when you think, when you see the average, it's kind of, but. I was still good and I was still, uh, and uh, after that I was feeling fresh again and I could go back to my, I mean, my traveling speed was still 40, 40 so 35 miles an hour, which was perfect. Uh, and uh, that's, that's just something that, that you have to take into account. It, uh, you don't plan for it, but uh, when it happens, you have to right. try to make it as short as possible. But yeah, that's mm. the only thing you can do. Yeah, always a lot of setbacks. And another thing that people, often don't realize about ultra racing and even for something like this as official as it is as it is um, you know as organized as it is little things crop up here and there so the wet roads you know that took at yeah. least you know it could say five ten minutes off of your yeah, overall sure, time yeah. Yeah. a bathroom break ten minutes that's already 20 minutes there but yeah. yet you still were able to break uh, and set those two world records so that's fantastic yeah. but i suppose that leaves you know 20 minutes at least for another person where they get that almost for yeah. free if they have more favorable conditions right yeah that's for sure yeah mm. let's see what else we we have here that Irma posted for you on your facebook page let's see it looks like at 12 hours you cycled 452.5 kilometers speed 37.7 kilometers i see is that a bit of a fog there Morning fog. Yeah, the morning was chilly. You know, like always, the, the the coldest time of the night is when when the sun's trying to come out. It was foggy. I mean, uh, I, it didn't. I'm maybe slow now. Maybe the pressure is uh, higher because my crew said that they thought or they they felt like it slowed me down. But uh, I didn't feel it. I, I wasn't cold. And the only thing is, you know, it was so. This is not the worst part. The, the worst parts of the course. It was so foggy that my my lens, my my glasses uh, were, were really screwed up. So I had to mm. clean them up, you know, a couple of times uh, just to see. Uh, yeah. Because they were just, uh, I just lost my vision. <laughs> now, were you uh, carrying lights through the night or was the van behind you providing sufficient lighting? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I had, I had the lights uh, in front and the back. Uh, mm. 
you can probably see, but it was blinking one, you know, it's not uh, necessary because the, the van is behind. Mm. But I had it I had it on all the time, even in the day, uh, not not from the start because I wanted to to spare it, to have it through all through the night, you know, not to have to stop to change it or something. Mm. Uh, but otherwise, even in the daytime, I just uh, turn it on and just had it on, you know, it's just safer even if the van is behind. And right. by the rules, you have to have the uh, both lights in during the night, you have to have the lights on and uh, you know the reflective like like normal your normal uh, ultra cycling race yeah okay very good to know yeah i was actually gonna ask that so there are a lot of rules that you have to follow i mean race cross america they give you a whole manual describing yeah. all those details so the same thing was true here did they actually it's give a you bit something shorter here but it's the same yeah it's similar mm-hmm. yeah okay but you're already used to that because it's something you've done dozens and dozens of sure times and yeah all, all my bikes are now with lights and with the reflective tape so it's not a big a big mm-hmm. for, yeah, for me. not a big yeah. issue now earlier you did mention something that i see that was written on this post that you had unofficially at that time improved some intermediate mm-hmm. records so tell me about that it looks like there was at least at this point three other ones that you had set yeah, those were three and there's another there's the same numbers for miles so it's kind of mm. it's a lot you know it's maybe maybe uh we didn't uh, post it a lot because it that just wasn't the goal you know there was just something uh intermediate uh, but but the big goals were ahead so we just didn't uh, think about it a lot uh, mm. it's nice to see and uh, when they're when they when they are uh, approved by VUCA, it would be nice you know to to have it written and to have them in the books but mm. otherwise the big goals were 24,000 kilometers incredible yeah. incredible here Actually, comes 12 the hours, 20, uh-huh. the, the, the one before when you uh-huh. see the 12 hours you know 452 here was already i mean for me it was clear that 24 i mean the overall stressors 24 mm-hmm. is just not going to happen because uh, i mean he was i was still up on the average but as as you know that the decline in the second half mm. uh it was just uh painfully clear that <laughs> it's not going to happen <laughs> Okay, so you were pretty certain at this point. So were were you just uh, determined to uh, s- keep setting the fastest time you could for the thousand kilometers? Sure, I mean, I mean you were pretty confident. I wanted to. Yeah, and it's still you know there's still a chance you know from Ram there's still a chance yeah. you know that uh, you have ups and downs. So, I mean, in theory, it's still a chance that you could uh, I don't know just start speeding again and start start uh, making up time again. But uh, right. and uh, there was still you know fifty plus record which was way way in which I mean, it was uh, hmm. pretty easy for me to do after this point because i had so much advantage okay so i just have i just kept focusing on a thousand and uh, trying to be as close to to Strasse's time as possible hmm. now would you th- would you say that if you were you know kind of close to potentially grabbing the 24 you would have pushed harder and then even set a faster time for the thousand kilometers or were you pretty set the, on your pace yeah no that would be the case because uh, if i would be closer to 24 i mean i did go faster for the last lap or two of the 24 too because you just see your goal and you do push a little bit harder you know but uh, but not as much as, as necessary so mm-hmm. uh, i mean uh, I just try to try to keep it up, you know. Try to do my best, push my best pace, po- and I did. That was my best mm. pace possible for this this, <laughs> this occasion. That's, there's just nothing to hide here, so right. I just couldn't do more on the day, yeah, which no. doesn't mean that that maybe I still am not able to do. <laughs> but sure. I don't know if you'll never know because it's it's just hard, so so hard. <laughs> and we'll yeah, see. every yeah, situation is different, but I mean, you did a phenomenal job. You you set and, and broke uh, world records. And so it was definitely a success, I would say, in, in all of our eyes. I'm happy. I'm happy with it for sure, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. That was, you know, that was just a dream and more and more, <laughs> even more for comparing myself, you know, my, you know, to my 10 years ago, <laughs> to mm. myself 10 years ago, you know, because at that time I, I would manage to do 900 kilometers and I was really... More than, you know, going for, maybe for the record, just going for 900 because I was, I just wanted to see if I'm mm. able, I wasn't at this time, but which isn't to say that if in different circumstances, maybe without injury in raw, or, I don't know, some other stuff, I, I would, for sure, could, I could do better. Mm. I still don't know if I can push it nine to 900 again, but uh, yeah. yeah. I'm still, I'm still pretty fast. Yeah. When it comes to I your, have... you know, mental stamina, mental strength, all your experience. I mean, it's been ten years since that first incredible uh, record 
a setting that you did in 2008. In fact, 12 years since oh, that yeah. point mm-hmm. and, and 10 years since 2010. Would you say that through all these last 10, 12 years that, that you've gained a greater edge mentally than, than you had back then? I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, I'm sure that I gain patience because, because you know, you know, you tried it more times and you, you know your feelings uh, more. So you kind of, that's why it's so hard. I mean, it's hard to explain. You know, when, when I started slowing down, even this time, you know, and my crew is kind of worried and what's happening and mm-hmm. do you feel bad? And it actually didn't feel bad, but just my legs were not responding the way mm-hmm. they should, you know. So it's kind of, uh, and you just, uh, you don't freak out uh, because you know how it is. And I was still confident that it might come back, you know, because it does sometimes, even in 24 hours, you know, even in the 2010 when they did 900 kilometers, I did yeah. have a big crisis in seven, 16, 17 hours and my average speed per hour dropped uh, considerably. Mm. But I was uh, managed and somehow, somehow without, uh, I don't know, outside help or something. It just... Uh, Something clicked, and uh, and I just kept. Uh, I mean, I, I could could raise it back again. Mm. This time I could raise it a little bit, but not 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 uh, enough. So right. so that's that's what you get. You get experience. You get to know your feelings. So mm. and you're not uh, so uh, freaked out, you know. when when you just go in uh, instead of twenty three miles an hour, you go twenty miles an hour, and you don't sure. You know, you don't go. Oh, what what's wrong? What what should I do? It just kept. Right. Keep keep you know, stay on the bike and uh, keep eating, keep drinking, and that's right. that's what uh, comes easier with. I mean, with experience. That's for mm. sure. Yeah. So even as much preparation as you did, your body still has to cooperate. And what you've done over the last ten years is develop more patience and understanding that when something happens that is unplanned, that you're not beating yourself up about it. You're just yeah. kind of taking that in stride. Sure. Yeah. You, just, you try to make uh, you know intermediate goals. You know, try to go for. Mm next hour you know try to go faster next hour and it's yeah, it's uh, mm. sometimes it, I mean, it always helps but sometimes it just you, you can just put in another gear and sometimes you just mm. struggle but you, you yeah i don't know and i think that helps a lot i mean what you just explained because for a lot of the multi-day events especially you have a whole crew a lot of things can go wrong from small details to large yep. details and being able to have that kind of a calm, cool, and collected mindset helps a lot because it's a whole team effort. And I'm sure even on this event, the same thing, you know, the car driving behind you this whole time. And as yeah. you mentioned earlier, being on the crew is also very difficult and, and tiring. It is, so yeah. it's, it's, it's great. I'm sure a lot of your crews in the past could probably attest to you being a good rider for them and not having to deal with too much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot yeah. of not difficult. I mean, so yeah. special. If, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, we are looking for the word. It's not the easy, <laughs> mm. but it's a lot different than RAM, you know. In RAM, you, you lose, I mean, you get, uh, because of lack of sleep, you mm. start to lose a little bit of uh, edge and uh, you, you're not so sure. sharp anymore. But here, this is, right. this is just, uh, I mean, even, even in RAM, when I'm sleepless, I mean, I'm, I'm sleepy. Mm-hmm. I'm, I don't remember that I ever lost, I mean, lost it completely or something, you know. Mm. It just it just come. I'm just probably just the kind of person I am. Not I won't say that I learned it or something. But just mm. I'm a calm person, person by nature, so it's it helps. Uh, and uh, and the, the the thing here is, I mean, maybe more in RAM than here. This is short, but just if something happens, when something happens, because it will, uh, it just uh, uh, have to look for the solution and then move on. You know, mm. not mm. don't look for. I mean, for. Who did it? Who who's responsible? It just doesn't matter. No, mm. you just uh, try to find a solution as soon as possible and uh, keep moving uh, right. in the right direction. <laughs> yep, and you move. You see sun coming up. Oh That's yeah, cool. beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Yeah. It looks like the scenery is just gorgeous there. Out in yeah, Sl- it is. I mean, Slovenia uh, is gorgeous. So everybody who's listening, come visit when you can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, come visit Slovenia. Very it's cool. small. I mean, from east to south, east to west, the the furthest. You know. I have mm. the record still. It's probably 13, 14 years old. One of my records, uh, huh. east, east to west, uh, it's uh, 210 miles, uh, nine hours and a half. Mm. I used to be fast. I mean, I'm still fast, but not <laughs> as fast as, <laughs> as I was. Yeah, that still hasn't uh, been broken. Uh, well, if, even in your slower years, you're still setting a world record. So <laughs> that's an incredible testament yeah. to how fast you are. <laughs> Let's yeah. see, Coca-Cola for... 
600 kilometers after 16 hours. Oh, so is yeah. that something usual? Is that, that quite a treat for you then? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It just uh, feels good. Uh, during the night, I got a couple of shots. I mean, a couple of bottles. Mm. They give me a spe- special bottle just for that. And then I, I yeah. take it for, for a lap or so. And it's, it's kind of a little, mm. wakes you up a little bit. And it also, your taste buds, you know, are with all that uh, electrolyte drinks and stuff. Uh, it just uh, kind of numb. And then Coca-Cola, right. I don't know, people who do ultra cycling, probably everybody knows it, you know, it's just yeah. uh, something, something, yeah, I would say, I mean, everybody says it's not healthy, but for, mm. for this case, for sport, I think it's, uh, I, I, I need it. Sure. <laughs> that's, that's my excuse uh, because. I, <laughs> really, yeah, like, you definitely need that, that change of pace. And I guess even some of that caffeine. Now, was that handed to you by Irma there in that, in that water bottle? Yeah, yeah, but uh, there was another person in the front. She was uh, mm. the back mixing, mixing the preparing the bottles, and somebody else gave gave them to me from the front window. Mm. Yeah. Now, how about from the you know the carbonation, the gas in, in the soda? Does that does that bug you at all? No, it, actually, it helps. <laughs> mm. I, sometimes they they do release it a little bit, but not full. I don't like Coca Cola without uh, gas. I don't know why. Ah, and it has okay. to be cold. If it's not cold, I hate it. Yeah, yeah. So that that's something that uh, probably was vocal about during Ram. If I got a uh, warm Coke, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just don't like it. All right, so no warm Coke for Marco. Make sure no. it's ice cold. And one year they, yeah, I maybe I shouldn't say it, but they brought mm. me Pepsi. And oh I no! It. Oh my! I don't know. I refused <laughs> it. They said no, 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 no. Go, go and fetch me Coke, and they did wow. somehow. <laughs> yeah, must have been a new crew member, huh? First time. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's funny. See you at the finish. He said, you have to love this man. 19 laps to go. Wow. So this was nearing, nearing the end then. Yeah. There you go. Nice, smooth uh, pedal yeah, stroke there. It looks kind of fast. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. nine. Oh, it doesn't, you cannot see that I'm in pain. I'm, I'm, mm. <laughs> I don't know. Probably, you know, you're not. When you're riding, you just don't feel it. But when you stop, it just hits you because I was... Mm. When I stopped, I, I had a lot of uh, upper body, you know, shoulders and forearms. Mm. You know, just uh, this position is just uh, not so uh, usual. I mean, it just takes takes its toll. So. Right. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. So even at this point, you still had 19 laps to go, but you were pretty beat up already at this point? Yeah, no, I don't remember. The, no, mm. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, my legs were not uh, as smooth as they they were in the start, at the start but uh, it wasn't painful or something, you know. Now, what's slower than usually? <laughs> sure. What yeah. bugged you the most? I mean, about being in that position uh, for so long. I mean, was it your your back, your arms? You know, what no, kind I mean, of bugged you the most during the ride? I mean, even even the the, the injuries that I have on forearms. You know, hmm. uh, I didn't. I mean, it didn't hurt a lot. I, hmm. Now, and I think of it, I don't even remember. Okay. Uh, I do remember that it hurt uh, the last couple of laps of those uh, this bad part of road. I was kind of thinking, should I should I just grab the handlebar, you know? Mm. But it was it's just not there, so I just uh, stuck it out, you know. It, even even if it hurt. Wow. Yeah. Well, as, uh, I mean, I'm used to this position, so I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm mm. pretty. You know, you see the road here. That was one part of it, uh, mm. really uh, pretty bad. Seven hundred twenty-eight. Uh, yeah. mm. Seven hundred twenty-eight kilometers yeah. in twenty hours. So soon to be new world record for the twenty-four hour. You just had four more to go there. See in these different positions. So nice fields yeah. in the background. Oh, it looks like are, are there some earbuds? Is that just to communicate, or are you listening to music? I have. I listen to music on my phone, so they have to call me uh, this time. You know, with this helmet is so. Um, it just just didn't uh, want to deal with uh, fixing the mm. the system with which we usually use. So I just uh, had a phone with the music, and then they phoned me, and they wanted to talk to me. They just call me and. Mm. Uh, now where you can where see is here, your phone? I still have the over you know the jersey short sleeve jersey over the oh right yeah. uh, the skin suit because it was uh-huh. still morning so I when did I put it off I think I stopped for peeing or something so uh, okay. then I throw it off yeah. now where do you store your your phone is it just in one of your back pockets and yeah, pockets yeah yeah oh, okay yeah all right stretching out your legs a little bit there yeah sure. Oh, that, so that seat looks like looks interesting. Is that the, does that seat come standard with the spike, or is that something? Oh, this is infinite. Put? This is infinity. Probably oh. you haven't heard it. Yeah, yeah. This, that's that's oh, okay. uh, one seat that 
I mean, I've been using it exclusively for the last five years, almost four or five. Mm. In, yeah, in RAM 2016 uh, was the first time that I probably wouldn't be able to finish RAM without it, you know, because mm. it's, I'm sorry, I, hadn't, I don't have one here with me. Uh, probably seen it. It's uh, the one with uh, just the frame. Mm-hmm. So you, your seat bones actually are not sitting on the, on the seat, you know, mm. so you, it's a lot uh, comf- more comfortable. And I just, I just uh, don't want to use anything else. <laughs> so it's, okay. uh, it's so you, you would uh, recommend seat. you would recommend this type of seat then just with the frame, this in, infinity seat. No, with, with any, for I mean, with, for any ultra cyclist, uh, I mean, don't change it if you have a seat that uh, that's perfect and it doesn't give you saddle sores. Just don't don't change it because that's mm. you're lucky. Mm. But I was I was uh, trying to find uh, the saddle that that. And I had a couple of them, you know, which were good for up to two days, but RAM always, uh, mm. uh, you know, just gave me uh, big, big injuries on my behind, big saddle mm. sores, uh, mm. until I, I found the Infinity Bike Seat. Uh, it was on Kickstarter at that time, a new invention, and I mm. jumped on it and kind of felt it's going to be good, and it was, uh, I mean, uh, it's just a game changer. So it's uh, really, really good for the ultra cyclists. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Bikeseat.com. If anybody wants to check it, uh, it's uh, it's it's made uh, actually it's uh, US made, so it's uh, hmm. um, the inventor is Vin, Dr. Vince Marcel from uh, El Segundo, so near Los Angeles. Right. Yeah. A yeah. Good friend of mine. I usually when I when I visit Los Angeles, I visit him. And uh, hmm. now, are they uh, they are they one of your sponsors? Yeah. Also. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so who, all my all my sponsors? all my bikes, uh, the number we talked about yesterday, all my bikes have infinity on. Okay, sure. cool. Yeah, there's kind of uh, in the last RAM, I was kind of a, a little bit tried to experiment, you know, because uh, to change the pressure points. So I had uh, two different versions of infinity and uh, my old my old seat that used to work for me the best uh, be- mm. pre infinity. And when I tried it in my training uh, before in Borrego just hated it i just uh, left it <laughs> left it there. i just uh, i'm not used to it anymore it's so different so uh, now yeah. so nowadays i just use a couple of infinities so because there's different uh, options you know the mm. e2 and uh, e1x mm. and i just change them even even during i mean only for 24 hours no there's no time but in ram i mm-hmm. we change it just just to change the pressure points a little bit so we change it a couple of times a day uh, yeah. or uh, the saddles or the bikes, whatever. Yeah. Right. So even even after you know twenty years of riding ultras, it's still possible that there is better equipment, better setups out there. It is. I mean, you you only recently changed and found a new saddle, so that's that's pretty encouraging. Yeah. And another thing yeah. uh, that that's uh, probably you, you, we could see it also. A uh, couple. I mean, it, there's now there's more than a couple. Probably four or five years ago, I I really started having really bad uh, feet foot pain. Uh, in all all the races, uh, not to mention Ram, one of the Rams, uh, I think it started before Borrego, we could imagine. Mm. So the day one, the pain was so bad that I had to stop, put my feet in cold water and started with ibuprofen, so big quantities. I, mm. I did finish that Ram, but in uh, without without uh, painkillers, I wouldn't be able to. Mm. It was just so painful that uh, I was, probably I would have to stop, I mean stop. Stop with ultra because I could uh, manage uh, six, seven hours, but after eight hours, it was just too painful. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, I, I heard about it previously from uh, Danny Viss, you know, two time winner yeah. of M, Swiss guy. Right. He used those shoes, Biomech, they're called, and they're, um, the clip position is uh, mid foot. So it's not uh, the thing, you know, in the mm. front, which you, where it's usually, but mid foot, exactly on the mid of your foot. Hmm. You can check it out, midfoot uh, clip position. Oh, very and interesting. Just uh, one uh, year, it was probably 2017. I want uh, probably 2017. Uh, hmm. I was so bad after RAM that I uh, contacted them. You know, those, those shoes are pretty expensive. So I said, uh, if you're ready to make them before Borrego, so I gave them <laughs> not, not a lot of time, probably two weeks. Um, <laughs> then, then, and send them to me because they're German. Uh, so they said, okay, we can do it. So I, because mm. they do it uh, according to your feet. So I had to draw, draw your outline of your feet and everything. So I got them two weeks or 10 days before the race. I tried them and usually I would, 
I would not suggest you know to 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 try anything new mm. uh, before the big race, before the world champs. But this was just uh, so bad that I I couldn't imagine. I said I tried if if it works, it works. Then I saved you know if it doesn't, just my last race probably. Mm. And uh, I would just probably. 18th or 19th hour of Borrego, that Borrego, that I started thinking about it. Shit, nothing's hurting. You know, it was, it was mm. so relieving. Yeah. yeah. yeah so that, that, that's why now uh, I have no, I have to, not actually no foot pain. Uh, sometimes my heel, even this, this time, uh, the last two hours, I had my, my, a little bit, you know, alleviate my heel. I don't know why. But mm. otherwise, foot pain, which was, uh, debilitated mm-hmm. for it was just fun so it's uh if anybody has uh i mean it's i'm not saying that there's only those shoes i think there's a couple even there's an american company my client uh who did ram two years ago gregory i'm sorry gregory i forgot <laughs> uh yeah uh he did uh he bought them but not the german ones but the american company mm. uh, and he was really happy because uh yeah, the same the same thing happened because uh there's just not different kind of pressure. I don't know. You have to change the position, of course, so the seat position. Sure. A lot lower, I would say, three centimeters, or say almost two inches. Uh, mm. A lot lower uh, because you know it's just not on your uh, fingertips or whatever anymore. Mm. Uh, so you have to be careful and you have to try it out. And uh, but otherwise, yeah, just, just, if you have uh, problems with uh, uh, foot pain, it's it's just a ch- changer. I mean, it helps a lot. Right. Yeah, you do have to be mindful of your setup. And if something is bugging you, you have to look at what your setup is and consider that uh, maybe something sure. needs changing. I remember when yeah. I first started riding ultras, I was actually riding on a hand-me-down bicycle from my older brother. So he's a bit taller than me. So I was riding a larger frame. But now I thought it was normal to have a, a back pain in riding ultras. I thought, man, if you're riding for 10 hours, 12 hours, of course you're going to have back pain. It wasn't until a year later that I finally bought my own bicycle that with the right fit and all of a sudden, there was no yeah. more pain anymore. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's. Uh, yeah. I mean, for ultra, you have to have a professional bike fit. Uh, yeah. Even myself, I'm, I've been in the sport 35 years, and so I still do bike fitting, not mm. every year or every bike, mm. because I'm quite used to it. But uh, probably every second, every third year, I just go and check it out, mm. do some minor adjustments. Some sometimes, sometimes nothing's needed, but they just. Uh, Better, better to have a professional to look at you. Yeah. Now tell me about this photo. I see there's a bunch of other riders. Were they just riding out there or did they come specifically to see you? Do you know? I don't them? know. Yeah, I know those guys, those two guys are from my uh, cycling club. I mean, from my ex cycling club. Ah. But it just, uh, you know, all it was, you know, uh, that Sunday, Sunday, and there's a lot of cyclists that they were not allowed to ride with me and they were. Mm. Told, told that so uh, they were just uh, when they wanted to or sometimes they, I passed them so they just rode normally on the right and they passed them or sometimes they, they wanted to take photos mm. shout encouragement and stuff and uh, some people who wanted to ride with me the officials just told him that it's not possible and then they, they could ride with the, I mean, behind the, the van mm. Uh, but it's you know it's not <laughs> it's not that that uh, special up and behind the van so right. really, yeah there was there was a lot of cyclists out on, not on Saturday because it was rainy and miserable mm, mm. but on Sunday there was a lot of people out yeah okay so you had a little bit of encouragement there and I guess maybe yeah. motivation you know carrot on a stick for you trying to yeah. chase people down keep you going yeah yeah sure <laughs> pretty cool let's see another record in the bank five hundred miles. In just 22 hours, 23 minutes, 23 seconds. Wow, that's that's a fast one. So yeah. another one. Hmm. So you did the 100, 200, 300 kilometers, now also the 500 miles. Yeah. And then, of course, you set the 24-hour record for 50 plus and then the 1,000 kilometer. How, how, how many records did you end up setting in this one ride? I think it's 12 in all. Yeah. I have to, we'll have to wait for mm. for But it's a one, 100, 200, 300, and 500 kilometers and miles so that's eight mm. then you have six hours and 12 hours mm. that's 10 24 yeah and the two the two major ones so 12 incredible so it should be 12 yeah incredible that's enough that's t- enough to last a lifetime <laughs> <laughs> yeah just, yeah as i told you the, the no yeah the the important ones are yeah. the two big two big ones right. yeah that's my my friend my friend and my 
colleague, uh, Tomas. Hmm. Uh, he's the guy who I won Ram with 12 years ago in 2008. Ah. So he came uh, from Sally, you know, he's not from this part, but he cycled mm. and uh, he just greeted me and, you know, wished me good luck. Uh, mm. it, was not, it was cool to see him. Yeah, yeah, and I see up ahead, is that one of the traffic circles? Yeah, that's one of the roundabouts, yeah. Mm. Oh, that reminds me. Actually, I see Christoph there. I saw, I saw some other, other photos here as well. That's Christoph yeah, yeah. Strasser riding with you right there, isn't it? Yep, it is. You see, you see his handlebar? How much lower he, he, it's it's crazy how aero, wow. you know he can stay aero for 24 mm. hours mm. i mean it's, and i, it's, I see uh, the the water bottles there in his rear seat as well yeah. that's what you were talking about so, earlier yeah well, well every what counts yeah i don't know we're i don't know a little bit we just he just by me for a minute or two yeah and he also touched a little bit aero and he said yeah that he knows that it's uh, i mean for ultra it's uh, you have to measure you know aero versus uh, comfort Mm -mm. because comfort is, uh, is important very yeah. probably even more than error you know we have to be able to hold that position for 24 hours otherwise it just doesn't work mm. so yeah uh, i wonder what's crazy. faster so, is your is your spoiler custom spoiler back there faster or his uh, double water bottle, well, bottle <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows we have to go to a wind tunnel to check yeah. it <laughs> Pretty cool. So, and I did watch this video actually when it was posted yeah. live four days ago. So, I guess um, he was talking with somebody in, in your crew. This is somebody. Yes, Mat Matisse, yeah, my 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 show. He was the chauffeur, and he's a masseur, and uh, yeah, my friend. Mm. So, yeah, and so Christoph actually rode out to see you specifically, right? Yeah, he's. I mean, he surprised me. Uh, mm. I was kind of. I was thinking a little bit of asking him to to come and officiate, you know, but it takes uh, you know twenty four hours and. Mm. Uh, it, it'd probably be bad for him, you know, because uh, he would have to say no and he would feel bad. So I just mm. didn't want to burden him, him with it, this. And he was, it was really a nice surprise. I was, uh, mm. when I saw him, I was kind of had to think, oh, is it, <laughs> is it Christoph really? <laughs> yeah. So it was a nice gesture from him. You know, he's an ex uh, record holder. I was joking when, when, when he you know, came to ride with me a little bit. I mm. said, well, I'm, I'm so nice, and aren't I, to, to leave you the record? And he was laughing yeah, because it was, <laughs> I, just, I just couldn't do it this time. But it was yeah. nice to see him. It's, it was a big boost, you know. I, yeah. I think I was going uh, a little faster the next lap. <laughs> oh, that's great. It was cool to see, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just fantastic the the ultra family. I mean, I know Christoph doesn't live nearby here, so he had a bike out. Yeah, it's 75 just... miles one way, and then he had yeah. the bike back. So. It, yeah, it's oh. part of the, part of the training, uh, but it was cool yeah. to see him. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Glad you got that yeah. motivation motivation boost. So let's see, last what last lap before world record fifty plus five hundred twenty three point zero eight miles pending approval. So more photos out on the road. Yeah, that was exactly exactly the time when yeah when I passed. Yeah, that was oh, a so stop. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, after the, I did twenty four hours, I came to the start finish line of the pit stop. Mm. So we just stopped uh, you know just uh, just uh, i think they wanted to do a photo there was some journalists there you know it was mm. semi a little bit of a pit stop for me a little bit of stop for the journalist you know because there was a big 24 hour record behind me mm. and uh, the bike behind me this is my favorite bike uh, I, oh, had, I just is. i just said when we stop in i will i will hop on another bike because my speed was not uh, that that fast anymore that I needed, uh, you know, the TT bike. Mm. Uh, so I said, just I just go with my my favorite bike. My I I'll enjoy it more, and and I did. I was I was happy I did it because the last four hours were then uh, more enjoyable. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, more pleasurable. Yeah, well, she's definitely a, a beauty. Yeah, all right. That's uh, Spiegel San Marino. Yeah? Mm. And there was some some photo some, some photos taken. So we. Here we would we could also do it in uh, two minutes, you know, and we lost probably ten or twelve or something. Mm. But you know, it was uh, just the media takes. I mean, just just had to be done, you know. I mean, mm. and that was in not not no not much hurry, you know. I, we knew that the record will be ours, uh, so we took our time a little bit, you know. Um, yeah, that's and fantastic. Also, also went inside to to wash wash my. My face a little bit. I I was having trouble uh, with my eyes. You know, it just uh, with all the salt. salt you just uh, mm. um, 
not perfect, so I just washed myself and uh, yeah, we had the uh, yeah, that was the, the second. The yeah, second well, stop. glad you were able to get a bit of enjoyment and celebration for uh, you know setting yeah, a that was world cool. record. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was not the uh, if I tell you before I told my crew I don't want this time because we yeah. did the same in uh, indoor track, you know, after twenty four mm. hours we stopped and it took forever. And when I <laughs> when mm. I saw after. The t- probably that time it took 20 or some even even more than 20 minutes and then you think to yourself it's just crazy you know i could uh, why and this time i said no no stopping after 24 but you know just everybody said oh no you have to you know there's uh, media and so why not you know it's just it's just think to yourself yeah, yeah I, and you, it helps a little bit and it uh it uh it gets you you get um uh, I mean, you're faster than for for the next couple laps for sure because uh, every bit of rest uh, helps. Uh, but it could be it could be short for sure. So if uh, there's there's another probably five six minutes uh, that you could easily spare. Uh, so uh, maybe for next time or for next guy who <laughs> who goes for the record, right? Try not to stop. You know, the, yeah, stay on the yeah. bike. It's the same everywhere for ultra cycling. You have yeah, to stay sure. on the bike. So it looks like here you're getting towards the end. Still more spectators cheering you on. Yeah. It's like a nice stretch of road here. So do you ride through this town and then it goes out into the country and then you kind of loop back around? Is that yeah, what it is? Yeah, that's, that's a start-finish line. When, when, mm-hmm. This is the bed stretch, I mean, the bed yeah. surface road. Oh, okay. And it's also a little bit up and down, I mean, just a little bit up and down. So you, you yeah, can stretch okay. your legs a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Ah, looking fast. So now is yeah. this to, is this towards a sunset then? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you, yeah, you finished in the evening, right? Yeah. Yeah, I finished ten p.m. Yeah. Oh, yeah here we go. Finished one thousand kilometers, twenty eight hours, fifty minutes, fourteen seconds. Average, thirty four point six seven kilometers yeah. an hour. Here's another thing that I didn't want to stop. Now there was a, we measured uh, the line for a thousand kilometers, hmm. but um, it was measured, you know, by hand and. Uh, so usually the VUCA likes to calculate the, the distance according to your uh, average speed. Mm. So here I just stopped for this photo. So this was really only probably 10 seconds or 15 seconds stop. And then I have to prolong because they were, I had to get to, another, to the, this, the next uh, roundabout, which was another, another measured uh, point of the, of the route mm. uh, so that they get uh, the average the average speed and they can also calculate the so maybe the the official time might be a couple of seconds plus or minus because of that probably in minus mm. I, mean, I mean more because mm. i did stop here for 15 20 seconds but uh, after that i still had to do another three three and a half kilometers uh, to the next roundabout and that was the the real finish for me incredible yeah. Congratulations on such a huge achievement. Well, I suppose 12 achievements. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So what did you do after? So you finished. I mean, I guess there were some celebrations. I mean, how long yeah. were you still there on the course before you actually ended up going off for, I guess, a shower and some dinner? Yeah. Let me think. Oh, first, uh, there was a celebration. For, there were some media, you know, some uh, newspaper people and the cameraman. So they did take some more photos by this sign, you know, that you saw before, 1,000 kilometer world record. And there was a mayor congratulating, so some champagne opening and, uh, you know, I got the first shower with champagne, mm. actually. And then another couple of photos with the crew and uh, everybody from the organization. So that took probably 15, 20 minutes. Mm. Uh, and we drank some champagne. Not me, I did, I did taste it a little bit. <laughs> uh, after that, I, I got a shower. It was, uh, it was really good. I mean, uh, there was a fire, firehouse there open, so they, they opened it for me, and I could get a shower there. And I was so hungry, you know, because you, all day, you, on 29 hours, you eat only mostly gels and uh, drink and uh, some bars, some bananas. I think I had two bananas also. Huh. So it just I was just craving for food, you know. It was pretty yeah. late in the evening, but uh, we were lucky that you know, I, like I told the locals, really uh, took us took us for their own, and uh, mm. even the restaurant uh, stayed open for us a little bit longer. 
So I just then we went for dinner with the crew and uh, some people from the organization. And uh, I, I, I have to tell you, I ordered a lot, <laughs> but I couldn't finish. You know, my eyes were hungrier than my stomach. Yeah. So after that, I, I think we got I got to bed uh, around one one a.m. So. Mm. And, and and then uh, when did you wake up? You know, it's uh, the same que- the same question I get after REM. People think that I can sleep for thirty hours, but it just mm. doesn't happen because you you wake up hungry. <laughs> it yeah, was the same yeah. here. I thought uh, I said I said to them, just let me sleep until if I sleep until noon, just don't touch me. Mm. But I think I was in in the kitchen uh, at eight, <laughs> and I was looking for food. And then I yeah. get I I, I I I went back for a little bit while, for for another two hours after. After the first breakfast, I went back for another two hours because my crew mm. and then the Irma also, they were also sleeping. Uh, then I think we slept until 10. Then we went for coffee and uh, cleaned everything out and mm. went back to the, to the start line because we had some, still some, some stuff there from yesterday. Right. And right. then we, we drove home, which is uh, around two hour drive. Wow. And then the next night was longer. The next night, I, I think I stepped uh, from 10 to 8 or something. So that's, what mm. is it? That's yeah, about 10 that, hours. 10 hours. It's mm. not that much. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and are you, would you say you're, you're fully recovered now? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, it's, uh, I mean, yeah. it takes time. I don't know. Uh, it, it's fun. That's, that's fun of ultra cycling or every, everything in life. You know, you forget the, the hard, the hard, the painful things and you, to just remember the the good things. That's why we we come back for more. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, no, my head, uh, my hand, my feet are still, uh, not feet, legs are still pretty pretty bad shape. So today is yeah. Thursday, so it's been uh, four days. Yeah, four days mm-hmm. after. I mean, I did uh, from the second day. I did I, every day. I, I go for half an hour, forty five minutes, mm. just to try to loosen the legs because uh, you know, like after. Every hard effort, you just uh, know the stairs are painful. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but it's it's getting better, you know. Today, today I did the uh, forty miles already, and it was pretty good. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I can push the normal wattage or something, but uh, mm. it's almost painless. I mean, when I stand up on the pedals, I can I can still feel pain. Mm. But I would think uh, that this pain will go away in one week. So by the weekend, I will probably join some easy group, group rides around here uh, but uh, totally recovered i would say in this couple of weeks um, so two three weeks yeah and now yeah. it's it's uh, everything is in the air um, i mean uh, i'm doing the tour, tour race around switzerland but just uh, i mean just uh, just as a not a solo i couldn't do it solo with these legs <laughs> <laughs> so i'm doing it in a, in a team uh, with some sponsors mixed team so it's going to be fun uh, i mean every yeah. four person team for thousand kilometers that's pretty should be pretty easy for me even i mean the legs will be back by then uh, it's uh, on 15th of august okay so, so that's so coming then, up just then, a few weeks yeah yeah a couple of weeks now two weeks from now yeah Mm. Then it's uh, we're planning something special, uh, but you'll find out later for, in Ireland with Joe Barr, mm. another ultra cyclist, and uh, then Borrego if it happens. Uh, I mean, I'm registered, but I'm a pessimist. I have to say because there's <laughs> no way to get tickets now at the moment. You now it's still two months to go. Yeah, yeah, more than two months to go. Yeah. A week more, but I don't know. I'm hopeful. I I, I would hate. Uh, I, I was. Yeah, like I told you before, I, I usually for the last five, six years, I've been in California two to three times a year for two to three weeks. So that's mm. two months, almost a year. Mm. And this year I haven't been there at all. And it's kind of, I'm missing my friends, if not yeah. anything else, you know, it's just, um, yeah. So I hopefully, otherwise next year, yeah, I'm sure that next year should be, let's sure. hope. I don't know. Well, we, we all miss you here in the States, but glad to be able to follow along on social media these days. And you guys yeah, did a true. fantastic job. And again, Irma did a great job capturing a lot of those memories. So glad we were able to go over that today. Thanks for Thank taking you. the time yeah, to... Fun. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to chat. I mean, I think it's a big deal. I mean, even if it was just the one world record, but let alone you did 12. So it's great to be able to just capture that here in this video so that way you know we can rewatch it in the future especially as an inspiration 
I think, uh, you know, you've been in the sport for such a long time. I mean, even 10 years ago, it would have been enough if you hung up your cleats at that point when you set, you know, those two world records in 2008 and 10, but <laughs> you're oh, still, you know, it's, still yeah. it. I, I, people ask me oh, why and how long, I'm, I'm not sure, but I still mm. love this, you know, and until, until I do, I just, uh, I, I don't see myself stop. I mean, mm. I'll probably, you know, I tell you the truth, uh, I will do less probably, I mean, less racing and uh, more coaching uh, mm. as the years go by, but I still, I still, I'm still competitive. That's the first, and I still oh, find yeah. it uh, fun, mm. mostly. You know, there's some painful parts, but you forget about it, as I told you mm. before. And uh, I just love this sport, so um, why not? Um, I am... You'll see me. You'll see me again. I'm mm. sure. Now, Marco, how old are you? Fifty-three. Uh, I had my fifty-third birthday. What's the day? Ten days ago, a little bit. Yeah, thirteenth of July. So it's not oh, that far. Two weeks birthday. ago. Yeah. Huh. Thanks. <laughs> Fantastic. I, well, yeah. the reason I ask, not to put you on on the spot, but <laughs> because I think that just speaks a great deal about well yourself and all that you've accomplished, but also is an inspiration for many of the viewers out there. Many who may think, hey, you know, I'm 40, 50, 60 years old. It's too late for me to get yeah, started. Can't no, really it's never too much. late. Yeah. I, I know I may have a couple of friends, a few friends that uh, even started when they were 50 plus, even close to 60. Well, you know, well, there's a couple of, couple of them. Dextuk, I think, started pretty late, mm -hmm. uh, at least the racing, you know. So it's always... Uh, there's always time. You can always uh, hop on the bike. And bike is uh, the most, uh, how do you call it, body friendly. Uh, it's really friendly for your body. Right. I know Not running, uh, I don't know, it's really for your joints. It's just, I mean, people love running. And I used to, I used mm. to run a lot, uh, but it was 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, even half marathon and stuff like that. But it just, it just, uh, just kills your joints. Uh, but cycling is, uh, I don't know, it's really friendly for your muscles, everything. Uh, and you can travel, you're free. So it gives you freedom. It's just, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Uh, it's just so, yeah. so, so many good things. Uh, you just, when you, when you, there's a saying, uh, Mario Ciuppolini, you know, probably heard of him, a uh, mm. great Italian sprinter, mm. who said, uh, when you, bike has a soul, if you learn to love it, it will give you emotion that you never forget. Mm. And it does. I mean, you, you probably can, can vouch for yes. that because it, it's really, um, especially in, this, in ultra cycling, you know, as we mentioned before, because it's a big family, everybody helpful, everybody, because everybody knows how hard it is, mm. uh, how, what kind of work it, it takes. That's why we all support each other. And it's, it's just different. It's not your normal sport where, you know, you, you look at your opponent and you say, oh, I'm going to crush him. You just <laughs> do your own race and uh, yeah. that's, that's it. And uh, you, if you can help your opponent, why not uh, try mm. to? Yeah. So it's, it's uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about the sport, uh, you know, as an individual, but also as a family. So again, really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy competitive schedule to be able to chat about uh, you know your 12 world records i'm glad you're able to stop and smell the roses and celebrate your achievements once in a while <laughs> yeah thanks yeah you know yeah. like for everybody this year is not that busy <laughs> you know this covid thing did uh, yeah. mess mess our lives a little bit but yeah we try to make the best of it and uh, yeah. well marco just a few fun sprint to the finish line questions here in closing okay. out this interview but look forward to having you on the show again for your future accomplishments and the events that you do and you know it'd be great to also discuss more about your coaching i'm sure a lot of people are eager um so first question yeah, i have uh, yeah because uh -huh. when we we're that uh balak coaching dot si is my coaching website so just check it out all right we'll put a link for the folks so they could check you out Thanks. i mean if if they want to accomplish something big and great or set a world record, I think we've got the, the right guy here. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of uh, great coaches out there, uh, yeah. but if you want to do RAM, you would like to have somebody with RAM experience. Mm. And we also have, I'm not the only one, we also have uh, quite a few coaches with RAM experience. So mm -hmm. yeah, you have to, I mean, it's really uh, makes it a lot easier mm. for, especially for the rookies. Of course. Definitely. Now, Marco, on that note, do you think ultra cycling requires more physical or mental strength? Now you have tons of experience. What do you say? Yeah. Now I'll, I'll copy, I'll copy Christoph because he, 
this what he said is uh, true it's actually one third uh, physical one third metal and one third the crew mm. and it's true because without the especially probably especially for m because some you know some double centuries you can do without a crew but for the for m for sure uh, crew is essential mm. maybe even more than 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 everything else because uh, the crew cannot win the race for it, but they can certainly lose it Mm. I've been blessed to have uh, to have wonderful crews every time, and um, yeah. if I do it again, I'm sure I I can come up with a great crew again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess great leaders attract great people. Now they yeah, also say that helpful. behind every great man is a great woman. So that's true. Irma has been there by your side. What would you like to say to her just in thanking her? I mean, for this incredible achievement, but through all the years, I'm sure it hasn't been yes. easy for her. Yeah. The- it's hard to put it in words, you know, because yeah. I just uh, nothing, nothing of the. I I cannot say that half of it wouldn't have, but nothing of this would happen. Uh, not, none mm-hmm. of my successes without her love and the support, because it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Especially in the first, I don't know, more than half of it when I was still working uh, the full time job and the family and the training. It, without the home support, it's just uh, not possible. We know everybody who tried it, this sport knows it, uh, mm-hmm. and we're blessed to have the, the spouses that uh, support us i'm happy uh, mm-hmm. and i love her a lot yeah that's beautiful all right i think that should be enough to get you at least another 10 years of her support right <laughs> <laughs> Is um, it? maybe another 10 I rounds <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah. okay last two questions yeah. here marco um fun one how would you rate yourself in terms of bicycle maintenance scale one to ten ten being just an excellent uh mechanic there for your bikes six six huh yeah okay. you know I, I i i like to be short but it's just some some stuff i don't i mean i do everything i clean them uh, i mean you just if we just talk about cleaning uh, i'm pretty mm. thorough i mean i'd like to have my bike clean, but uh more more um deeper stuff you know like uh, uh i don't know bottom bracket setting and stuff i just mm. i just never had time or never wanted to take time i don't know to to learn it mm. it would be beneficial i, I admit but i just uh, trust my mechanics and uh, it probably even before there was something uh, before this record i had a big problem with the because on my primary tt bike uh, the di2 died was it ten, two days before before the event and i was mm going crazy and uh, my Gregor Koch, my first mechanic, he took, I was sitting there with him for three or four hours before because we tried oh. everything we tried, mm. and nothing worked. And then he <laughs> found the, the reason, which mm. was uh, the wires of the two were just squeezed there, you know, we pressed and mm. so in fact it would, it would be enough just to change the wires, but it was the wires from the triathlon, long story. Otherwise, we had to we had to find another friend who had the the spare parts, and uh, so the next day I was with him for another hour or two. Jeez. So yeah, thank you both. Yeah, the, without them, I was I was going crazy, you know. Because <laughs> if that would happen uh, a day later when we were already in uh, the Bronick at the start line, I, I'm not sure mm. what would happen. Yeah, I, I would have to. To do it all with my my favorite bike <laughs> that wouldn't be bad, too bad as well yeah a little bit slower not a lot slower but yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so yeah that's why uh so the the most uh the mo- most of the i mean the change in the tires even tubulars that's not a problem but but otherwise i just like to, to trust the bikes with my mechanic um, yeah. and that's it yeah now what what would you what would you uh tell those people who are watching who have an idea to set a world record one day what what would you tell them yeah it depends which one you see they talk about those twenty four or something yeah anyway uh, first thing you go to VUCA website and read there's a section about the rules and you i think there's step step by step uh, instructions so you have to you have to read those really. I would suggest first uh, the cyclists read it and then find somebody who will do that paperwork for you. I mean, we we did help. It's part of my coaching business. We did help uh, with their mouth to some of the other other people doing it because we, it comes more natural. I mean, we, we've done it so many times, so it's mm. quite easy for us. So 
if you if you need uh, help, you can contact us for help. Otherwise, just read the read the instructions. It's it's not that difficult, but it's just uh, a lot of paperwork, so you have to be careful and. Uh, and then start training a uh, set a goal. It's it's a lot easier. I mean, I mean, when you set a goal, your training becomes, I mean, easier. I don't know, probably yeah. harder in one way, but easier because you have a, a mind, yeah. you have a goal, and it's just uh, it's not so difficult every day. You know, why why you have to work hard? You know, so it's it's a good thing. So that's why so many you know, world records and so many Everesting this year because there's no other mm. races. So. Yeah. People need other goals, and uh, yeah, just go for it. I mean, uh, it's it's fun. I mean, it's fun when you when you set out. You have all those, you know, cross cross records, especially in the states. Mm. All those cross uh, states mm. uh, records, north to south, east to west, and different. And I'm I would bet that some some states still don't have records. So why why not go for the, for that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. we'll we'll welcome you over here to set all those records. <laughs> that would be yeah, yeah, I was thinking about it. Some yeah, no, wait, why not? Yeah. Yeah. If you get me some sponsorship to it, <laughs> then, then it's a deal, yeah. yeah. Okay. That would be probably fun. Yeah. You know, you know, there's a guy who did the fifth how many states do you have? Fifty one? Sorry, fifty two. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm, I was close. So he did fifty two Iron Man's in fifty two states. You remember? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Iron yeah. Cowboy was he? Yeah. Yeah. So why, yeah. why not do something like that? You know, cross <laughs> cross state records. That would be fun. Yeah. Mm. All right. But well, probably costs a lot. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll have to get that one underway. But I know you've got all the experience <laughs> yeah. necessary to pull that one off. So we'll That'll welcome fun, you yeah. to all all the states. Okay, Marco. Last question: yeah. Who would you want to nominate for a future episode? Somebody that you've always wanted to hear from learn about or a specific event that they've done oh there's so many uh, i mean i'm sure that you'll want to get uh, christoph some sometime oh, yeah. um but let's see this year let's let's have a uh, dave dave has yeah. well, he won a uh, race across oregon yeah if you if you're talking about this year you know there's not many yeah. races this was probably the first one and mm. dave is you know he did ram so many times uh, mm. He's a good friend. Uh, I mean, I remember him from 2005 was the first friend that we did together. I mean, I, I remember him from before because I watched the documentary about 2004. I didn't do that one because I was uh, uh, not healthy. You know, for my first run, I, I needed some time to recover. Mm. But yeah, it was it was fun meeting him in person, and he's he's a great guy, like most most of the people in ultra cycling. So yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah I'm right. sure he'll be happy to join. Yeah. And he well, has a thanks. lot of story to tell. Yeah, just like you. And Marco, it's been a real pleasure. Thanks again. Can't wait to continue following your journey and seeing how you do through the rest of this year with what you have coming up, especially hopefully everything works out in Borrego and you are Thank able you know. to come so we can see you there. But uh, congratulations again. Big congratulations. Incredible achievements. And um, yeah, you're just an incredible athlete. So thanks again. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Until next time, keep spinning ultra, everyone.